Welcome to Billionaire Romance Audiobooks. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It helps more than you know and is the best way to stay up to date on our latest releases. When you subscribe, you'll also get notified when we release new videos. We also love hearing from our listeners. If you have any suggestions for future audiobooks, please feel free to leave a comment below. Or, if you want to say hi, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening, and we hope you have a great day. Subscribe to this channel today, and join the Billionaire Romance Audiobooks family. Dangerous Kiss A Billionaire Romance Audiobook By Michelle Love Narrated by Google Play Aut Narrated Voice Audio Copyright 2023 BFA Publishing Note, we edited this romance audiobook to comply with the YouTube content guidelines. You can grab a copy from Google Playbooks if you want to get the unedited version. Blurb The last thing my mind wanted was to fall for Cosimo De Luca. But my body and soul want to belong to him. Beautiful green eyes, dark curls, and a body I just want to wrap myself around. I want to become his so bad but I carry so much baggage from my past. And why would a man like him care about me? Except. He's sweet, kind, and the way he looks at me. I can't stop thinking about him. Especially now that he's offering me everything I ever wanted. Did I mention he's my boss? Yeah, so not a great idea to get involved. I don't know if I should risk it all for this gorgeous man. Chapter 1 She reached out and touched his face as his steely gray eyes fixed on her. She felt him tense at her caress, but Lucy was glad he didn't draw away. Her fingers moved lightly over the craggy planes of his face, across the crow's feet at the corner of his eyes, tracing the fine lines of his cheekbones. You are beautiful, she whispered, and a strange look came into his eyes. Dear one, you are so young, his voice shook with emotion. If you agree to this, know that I will strive to make you happy. He took her hand and kissed the back of her fingers. But I know that my age may prevent you from ever loving me the way I would wish to be loved. I don't see age, Lucy said, her blue eyes serious, her tone fervent. I see experience, I see adventure, I see so much I could learn from. Surely love, real love, is based on more than a number. He stared at her for a long moment, then nodded. Then it is settled. Yes, Lucy said, drawing near to him, it is settled. I am yours, Thornton. Yours. And she pressed her lips gently to his. Cut. Okay, that's good. Let's move on. Cosimo de Luca's voice was weary, and the dark circles under his eyes obvious. Biba May shot the director a quick glance as she moved in to drape a robe around Stella's shoulders, but Cosimo was lost in his notes already. Stella, her blonde hair piled up under a 1920s Marcel wave wig, glared at Biba. I'm freezing. Be a bit quicker next time. Biba said nothing. She'd learned a long time ago that rising to Stella's bait was never a good idea. Instead, she would just fix her dark brown eyes on the actress, and Stella would smirk. Biba never understood why Stella kept requesting her to be her assistant on set, but despite her nastiness, Stella paid very well and having the odd cell phone thrown at her head was worth it. Besides, the second time Stella had gotten physical, Biba picked up the vase Stella had just hurled at her, and had thrown it right back, missing deliberately by an inch or so. Stella had been shocked, and then had burst into peals of laughter. Quid pro quo, Biba may. Biba knew Stella liked her feistiness and the fact that she, Stella, could go on a full-blown rant, and Biba would listen to it all and then tell her exactly what she thought, whether Stella liked it or not. Which wasn't to say Stella liked Biba or anyone else, for that matter. Stella Reckless was the world's biggest movie star, a staggering beautiful blonde with curves to die for, a wide smile that could break into the most infectious laughter. Stella didn't care what people thought of her, rarely did anything for charity unless she got something out of it, and surrounded herself with her squad, a flotilla of easily replaceable minor actresses and pretty boys who never said boo to her and instead kissed her butt to the press. Except Biba. Biba wouldn't take any of her crap. An army brat, 
Biba May was used to tough people. Her African-American father, a hulking giant at nearly seven feet, was an army general, and her Creole mother was a major in the First Corps at the Joint Base Lewis McCord just outside Tacoma. Biba had every intention of following her mother into the military until it was discovered at age 15 that she had a heart murmur. After a failed surgery, Biba had spent her lengthy recovery watching old movies and falling in love with them, and she decided to pursue work as an assistant on movie sets. There, she found a world where she could observe the inner workings of film and movie magic. Her natural efficiency and organizational skills had easily found a home behind the camera. Often, though, she was asked why she herself didn't want to act. Biba rolled her eyes, aware of why they asked her. She knew people considered her beautiful, her gorgeously clear caramel skin, large dark eyes, short cropped black hair and curvy petite figure drew admirers constantly, but she insisted on resolutely downplaying her physical beauty. Hey. Someone nudged her now and she turned to see her friend, her best friend as it turned out, Reggie, grinning at her. You were out of it. Did Madame Lash need her butt kissed? Biba chuckled. If she did, she came to the wrong person. She looked around. They setting up the next scene? Reggie, who was the co-writer of the film, nodded at Cosimo De Luca, who was still reading his notes and talking in a low voice to his director of photography. You met him yet? Biba shook her head. Not yet. He seemed sad. I didn't want to intrude by introducing myself. I mean, what does he care about a personal assistant? Reggie half smiled. Actually, he's one of the good ones. Cares about everyone. Too much, I think, sometimes. You know him well? Not well, but I've worked with him a few times these past two years. His wife died a couple of years ago. Biba looked at the director. So that's what it is. What? The sadness. How did she die? She was sick, I think. Died young, too. She was only 33. They had a kid, too. Nico. He lives with his grandmother in Seattle. Doesn't see his dad much. Biba shook her head. That's terrible. Poor guy. Reggie moved away, and Biba took a moment to study the director. He was devastatingly handsome, or he would be if he didn't wear his grief across every cell of his body. His dark curls were in disarray, there were purple shadows under his bright green eyes, and his thick brows were knotted and brooding. Biba's eyes dropped down to his mouth, his lips, and found the curve of them sensual and appealing. She realized that she was staring just as Cosimo looked up and met her gaze. A jolt of adrenaline and of desire shot through her stomach, and she looked away, embarrassed. Luckily, Stella grabbed her at that moment, and she was kept too busy for the next hour to process why she had felt such a shift in her soul when DeLuca looked at her. They were filming at Lakewood Manor, a gorgeous Tudor-type Gothic house just outside of Tacoma, Washington, Biba's hometown. So, she asked herself later as she trudged to Stella's trailer, why haven't you been home, May? She had made excuses to herself over the three days they had been in Washington, such as, they had only been there three days, things were always hectic at the beginning of a shoot and, and, and. The truth was, she didn't want to go home only to be made to feel like a child again. Her mother had never been the warmest person, and Biba's father, with his fragile male ego, had taken his insecurities out on Biba from a young age. He could barely talk to her as an adult, but if Biba dared to get annoyed by it, Travis May would get verbally aggressive. Biba loathed the idea of seeing him, not wanting to feel that sense of rage, betrayal and injustice that her father kindled in her. Her mother, Biba had always felt that she was just an inconvenience to her mom, to their lives. She would never side with Biba over her father's behavior. Biba blew out her cheeks as she knocked at Stella's trailer door and went in without waiting for a response. She felt the trailer moving and rolled her eyes. Stella must be in the bedroom with Damon. Damon Tracy, or Prick Tracy as he was called by the crew, was Stella's latest paramour, not that Stella cared much for him. Biba hated Damon, he was as bland as a beige wall and as dumb as a bag of hammers, but he thought himself wildly appealing to the opposite sex, and had, on more than one occasion, flirted with Biba, his eyes roaming freely over her body. 
He had a habit of cornering her suggestively with seemingly innocent requests. Biba gave him short shrift, but that just seemed to encourage him. Stella's last boyfriend had been a sweetheart, Sasha, a businessman from Portland, and Stella had sent Biba to break up with him. Biba had been horrified and had burst into tears as Sasha took the news stoically, something she rarely did. Sasha had in turn comforted her, and they had remained good friends. Damon? Biba would happily dump him for Stella, and knowing her boss, that day wasn't far off. The trailer stopped rocking now, and to Biba's amusement, she heard Stella say, Is that it? Jeez. Biba stifled a snort of laughter, but she didn't hide her grin when Damon stomped out of the bedroom in his shorts, shooting her a glare as he pulled his jeans on and disappeared out the door. Stella appeared a moment later, seeing Biba's grin. She shrugged. Doesn't hurt to make him think he needs to up his game. Biba grimaced. Rather you than me. Stella chuckled darkly. I don't think there's much mileage left in Damon and I. Besides, I've got my eye on a much bigger prize. Gosh, who now? Stella grinned at Biba's sarcastic tone. Our delectable director, of course. You must have noticed how attractive that man is. Gosh, Italian too. I bet he's an animal in bed. Biba turned her face away, not wanting Stella to see how utterly thrilling that thought was to her. He's still mourning his wife, Stella. You might want to tread a little carefully. Stella made a noise. Please. This is the movie business. I bet he was sleeping with his leading ladies the second the wife was put in the ground. She had a point, but somehow Biba didn't think Cosimo De Luca was like other men. She changed the subject. Want to go over tomorrow's lines? Stella shrugged. Sure. Then you can help me with a plan to seduce Cosimo. He went through the day's filming with his DP, Channing, and his assistant director and co-producer, Lars, but he couldn't concentrate on anything. This movie wasn't his first choice to make, but at least he had close friends on the crew, friends that understood that his priority ever since Grace's death was to try to find common ground with Nico, their 16-year-old son. Cosimo tapped his phone screen and raised it to his ear. Hey, Mom. Olivia DeLuca's voice was warm. Cuz how lovely to hear from you. How's filming? First day. Always a strange one. We're shooting out of sequence, so the actors and crew haven't built up that chemistry yet. Same old, same old. How's Nico? Well, he likes his school, so that's something. After that trouble at Olympia High, I thought we would never get him settled. Just a shame we had to go private to find his niche. I'd pay any amount for that, Mom, so please don't worry. He hesitated. I don't suppose he wants to speak to his dad today? Olivia sighed. I'll see, cuz, but don't hold your breath. There was a long pause, and then Cosimo heard his son pick up the phone. Yo. Cosimo, relieved, chuckled. Yo, back to you, too. How's things? Cool. School's good. Glad to hear it. What's been going on? Not much. Playing some football. Cosimo was surprised. Really? Nico gave a mirthless laugh. Yeah, Dad. Surprise, surprise, your son's good at something. Cosimo's hands curled into fists. Here we go. Nick, I've never thought you were bad at anything. I don't know, I'm a pretty shitty son. You are not. Nico had been like this since his mother had died. They'd kept a lot of Grace's illness away from Nico, and when she had died so unexpectedly, Nico had been away on a school trip. The last time he'd talked to Grace, he'd been distracted and had gotten irritated with her fussing, what he called fussing, over him, and had snapped at her. He'd never forgiven himself for that, and he'd never forgiven Cosimo for keeping the severity of Grace's illness from him. Cosimo felt the pain of that perceived betrayal every time he talked to or saw Nico. He was losing his son and he knew it. Whatever, Dad. How's the filming? Just got started. You know, if you wanted, you could come down here on the weekend, hang out, see what we do. There was a long pause. I have a game this weekend. Then I'll come to you. Cosimo had filming scheduled for both days, but he would let Channing direct them. 
Nah, you have work. Nico hesitated. Maybe the weekend after, I could come down on the bus. I'd like that. Cosimo felt a wave of hope flow through him. Love you, buddy. Yeah. Nico's voice had gone cold again. Later, Dad. Later, Nick. Cosimo heard the phone being handed back to his mother. Only Olivia DeLuca would still insist on a landline. Hello, darling. Hey, Mom. Nick says he might come down the weekend after next. I heard. That's wonderful, cuz. There was a long pause. Cosimo, try to be happy, son. I worry that you're going into one of your hermit phases. I worry you'll get depressed again. Cosimo rubbed his eyes. I'm fine, Mom, honestly. It's been two years, that's all. I want to know how to move past it, but I'm stuck at the moment. It'll work out. Open your heart again, son, Olivia said in a soft voice. Grace would want you to find love again. I know. Thanks, Mom. After he hung up, he half-heartedly made some notes before going out in the twilight down to the lake. The mansion was built alongside one of the biggest lakes in the area, and the surrounding area was tranquil this late in the evening. Cosimo breathed in the night air, the sharp cold of it revitalizing his senses. It really was a beautiful place to film. The estate itself had been converted into a bed and breakfast some years ago and refurbished to an exquisite standard. The movie studio had bought out the rooms for the duration of the shoot, and some of the cast and crew were staying in the bedrooms that weren't used for filming. Cosimo looked back at the mansion now, lit up and warm. He knew he should be grateful for this job, and he was, he loved directing, but lately he had been craving more solitude. Maybe his mom was right, he was becoming a grumpy old hermit again. He shook his head and began to walk down to sit at the lake's edge. He heard a dog bark and looked around to see a German shepherd, one he recognized as the caretaker's dog, bounding around a slight figure who was brandishing a tree branch. The other end was in the dog's mouth, and they were playing tug-o'-war with it. He heard the woman laughing and pretending to growl at the dog, and squinting through the gloom, he recognized Stella's personal assistant. Biba? Was that her name? Teasing the dog and then rolling and playing with it on the grass. Cosimo smiled. Sweet. He watched for a few minutes from his lakeside seat. The girl saw him as she was about to turn and go back inside. For a long moment they gazed at each other, reading the other's expression, and he saw her give him a slightly embarrassed wave. He raised his hand to wave back, but she had already turned to go back inside. Cosimo turned back to the lake, but his mind remained on the young woman. He knew Stella Reckless was a mean boss, but this girl seemed to have the measure of her and that intrigued him. He also knew Stella had been batting her eyes at him for the last three days, and he really didn't want to go there. Stella Reckless was not his type at all, he preferred nerds like him, girls that would talk to him about something other than Hollywood, parties, or the Kardashians. Grace had been the biggest science geek, and had been applying to NASA when she got sick. He sighed and got up, walking slowly back to the mansion. His mom might be on him to find someone new, but Cosimo knew she would have to be very special indeed. He watched the director walk back to the mansion before slipping back into the woods. He'd been delighted when he discovered they'd been filming here. Open woods, the lake, these would all make it easier for him to get closer to Stella. Soon, he would contact her and make it known that he was there for her, in every way a man could be there for a beautiful woman like Stella Reckless. No one would stand in their way of their epic once-in-a-lifetime love story, and gosh help anyone that tried. Chapter 2 Beeps come on. A half hour won't make any difference. Rich Furlow, one of the movie set's security guards, openly sulked at Biba, who grinned back at him. Rich, and his joined-at-the-hip colleague Gunter, were some of her favorite people on any of the movies she'd worked on. Superb at their jobs, they had an irreverent and sometimes mutinous sense of fun. Rich, whose dark good looks and bright blue eyes could have made him a contender for stardom easily, was the instigator, always looking for ways to bring the more diva-like actors down to earth with a bump, and Gunter, a German-born bodybuilder, tagged along pondering the most random things in life, such as why dragonflies had multicolored wings, Zayer fancy schmancy no. 
Like, they are going to a party, ya? Yeah? Biba adored both of them. The two men had been best friends since their college years, and in turn, they had taken her under their wing early on in her career. Gunter had a crush on Stella, which remained resolutely unrequited, and so sometimes he would get drunk and wax mournfully about his lost love. Rich flirted outrageously with Biba, but they shared an almost fraternal bond, and now he was trying to persuade her to prank Damon, who Rich loathed. Come on, Biba, he said again, his voice wheedling. You know you want to. I'm not crazy gluing his mustache, Biba said firmly, trying and failing to keep a grin off her face. Lila will kill me for ruining her makeup job on him. Rich snorted. He needs it. Biba winked at him and went to find her boss. Stella was tapping her cigarette on the table in the trailer, her eyes locked in the middle distance. For a moment she didn't see Biba come in, then, after Biba had gotten tired of saying good morning and being ignored, she rapped on the table loudly. Hey space cakes. Make up in five. Stella blinked, then smiled. I heard you. Have you seen Damon this morning? No, thank God. Biba stopped and narrowed her eyes at Stella. She knew this look of old. Oh no. I know what you're thinking. What? Stella was all innocence. You get this look on your face when you're gearing up to dump someone. As much as I detest Damon, you can dump him yourself this time. I didn't ask you to do anything. No, but you will. Biba busied herself with the new script pages that had arrived. She frowned. Are the new pages pink or yellow? Shit, I can't remember. Stella ignored her. Now that you mentioned Damon? I didn't, you did. Stella waved her cigarette at Biba, then lit it finally, blowing the smoke away from her assistant. It was one of the few courtesies she showed. Perhaps it is time we went our separate ways. Hallelujah. Stella studied her. You really don't like him, do you? What's the matter, Biebs? Hate sharing me. Always, Biba grinned sarcastically, and Stella laughed. No, he's just a creep. You could do better. Stella looked vaguely surprised at the compliment, but didn't say anything. Well, next time I will. Our gorgeous director, for one thing. Cosimo De Luca, can you imagine getting reamed by that man? I bet he's packing too. Biba didn't answer, but the thought of Cosimo naked wasn't unpleasant, quite the opposite. Not that she'd ever tell Stella that. She remembered last night when she'd seen him watching her play with the caretaker's dog. He had looked almost happy, enjoying watching the fun she was having with the German shepherd. Maybe he was a dog lover. That made him even more appealing. She pushed the thought of him away. Do not get a crush on him. Do not. It was ridiculous, anyway. She'd never spoken a word to him. When she'd given him that awkward wave last night, he'd looked so surprised that she had turned away, embarrassed, and almost run back to the manor house. Hey, space cakes, Stella's tone was annoyed. Are you listening? Sure. See if you can get a read on DeLuca's attitude toward me. How? Watch him when I'm acting. See if he reacts in an admiring way. Biba started to grin. So, if he? She pretended to do an obscene gesture with her hand. Stella cackled with laughter. She could always be won over with a dirty joke. A little subtler than that, but yes. Stella stretched out her long legs and bunched her long blonde hair up into a ponytail. Right. Makeup. After Stella had left her alone, Biba tidied up the trailer and got out Stella's clothes for later, hanging them and steaming the wrinkles out of them. When she was done, she went to the craft service trailer and grabbed some granola and coffee. As she sat down, she felt someone tickle her sides and knew who it was. Reginald. She said in an imperious voice, then grinned as he sat down beside her. Reggie kissed her forehead. Good morning, beautiful. He immediately stole a spoonful of granola, his eyes twinkling behind his glasses, his thick wavy blonde hair a mess as always. Reggie, the food is right there, she moaned, but really she didn't mind. Reggie Quinn, screenwriter, music buff, fellow geek, was her best friend in the world, her person, the one she called at the highest points of her life and at the lowest. 
He had been the one to get her the job of Stella's assistant in the first place. They'd met when he came to her college to give a lecture on working in the movie business and found Biba the only student willing to engage. He called her over afterward, and they'd talked long into the night at her favorite bar. They found so much common ground that they both joked that it had been love at first sight. Their friendship, however, had remained platonic from the start. Biba never sought out romantic entanglements, and Reggie seemed too happy being single. Both of them agreed they had far better things to do with their lives. And Reggie was her champion when it came to her writing, endlessly giving her feedback and encouraging her to submit her work to agents. Biba still didn't believe she would ever make it as a screenwriter, but she was grateful to Reggie's support in any case. Reggie balanced his chin on her shoulder, and she leaned her head against his. How's the Wicked Witch? Biba grinned. Okay at the moment. She has a new plan. Oh gosh. Who this time? Reggie was rolling his eyes. Cosimo De Luca. Gosh, Reggie said, poor guy doesn't stand a chance. Right? But suddenly Biba didn't want to talk about Stella seducing Cosimo. It gave her a weird, unfamiliar sensation of jealousy and pain that she didn't understand. She finished her breakfast and said goodbye to Reggie, heading toward the makeup trailer. As she rounded the corner, she suddenly rocked back, almost colliding with someone. When she saw who it was, her heart thumped against her ribs. Cosimo looked startled, then he smiled, and to Biba it felt like the sun had come out. Hello at last. His voice was deep and rich, only a hint of an accent but it sent her senses reeling. At last. That made her stomach flutter. Hello, Mr. DeLuca, it's good to meet you. Not knowing what to do, she stuck her hand out, and his big warm dry hand closed around hers. There was a long hesitation as they both stared at each other, and Biba felt herself reddening. His eyes were intensely fixed on hers, such a beautiful green, and his lashes were thick and black and long. When his eyes dropped to her full lips for a second, Biba felt a thrill go through her. Gosh, he really was drop-dead gorgeous, and he was making her body feel things she'd never felt. It's Biba, isn't it? She nodded, feeling breathless. He smiled at her. My mom used to model for Biba in London in the 60s. Lovely name. Thank you. Is there anything I can do for you, Mr. DeLuca? Like kiss you. Like run my hand through that gloriously wild mop of curls on your handsome head. Cosimo smiled. You're very kind, but no, thank you. And it's Cosimo, Biba. Are you looking for Ms. Reckless? I believe I saw her walking back to her trailer. Thanks. She smiled at him and was gratified to see him nod. There were two rosy spots on his cheeks that surprised her, but maybe the guy was just really shy. She had heard that about him, and so far, she'd seen no evidence to contradict it. He also seemed in no hurry to leave her side. How are you enjoying the shoot? Not that we've been here long, but... Cosimo was interrupted by the hasty arrival of Rich, who shoved something into Biba's hand and ran off, shouting, Sorry, Biebs. Both Biba and Cosimo looked at each other askance, then Biba looked down. A half-empty tube of crazy glue. What was that about? Cosimo looked after the retreating and laughing form of Rich. Biba shook her head. She didn't want to get Rich into trouble. Nothing. Sorry, Mr. Cosimo. I do have to get to Stella. Later, watching the scene between Stella and Damon on the set, Biba couldn't help but watch how Cosimo reacted to his actors. He was unfailingly polite, but knew what he wanted, explaining to them both carefully how he felt the scene should be played, but listening to their suggestions. Gentle, she thought to herself. He's a gentleman. Damon was fiddling with his mustache, scratching the skin around it, and Stella looked annoyed. I don't want flaky skin in my mouth, Damon, thank you very much. Damon ignored her. So damn itchy. Gosh, haven't you ever had fake hair put on? Stella eyed his hairline. Looks like you'll need to in a couple of years anyway. Damon poked a finger into the mustache. My lip feels numb. Oh gosh. Biba's hand went into her jeans pocket to feel the tube of crazy glue. She shot a look over at Rich, 
who deliberately wasn't looking at her. Oh shoot. Her fears were realized a half hour later, when in the middle of a kissing scene, Stella broke away from Damon. Ew, what is that? Wath wath. Damon's speech was lispy and slurred, and he poked at his upper lip again. Wath the thuck. He tore the mustache off, making everyone wince and his lip bleed. Oh dear. Stella was both repulsed and amused, Damon's lip was three times the size it should have been. He looked like a duck. Chapter 3 Beba paled. Damon was obviously allergic to the crazy glue Rich had put on the fake hair. She moved behind the security guard and prodded him hard in the back. You idiot. Look what you've done, she hissed at him. How was I to know he's allergic? There was no guilt in Rich's voice, and instead, he moved forward. Hey everyone, calm down. Anyone got an EpiPen? We might need it. In the meantime, I'll call medical. Cosmo sighed, his schedule out of whack now, his concentration broken. Okay people, that's a wrap for today. Damon, go get treatment. He turned and caught Biba's eye, and she was astonished to see him smirk and wink at her. Clearly, Cosimo had no time for divas either. Biba caught up with Rich later and punched his chest hard. Rich grinned. Sorry I dumped the glue on you, Biebs. I had to make a quick getaway. And frame me, you jerk. You know in some war zones, crazy glue is used to close wounds, Gunder said thoughtfully. Maybe Biba should seal up your wing wong as punishment. He bit into an apple nonchalantly as both Biba and Rich stared at him. Thanks, guy. Rich said as Biba started to laugh. Maybe that's a great idea. Biba pretended to reach for Rich's fly. Come hold him down, Gunter, while I. Rich skipped out of her reach. Ha ha. Listen, in all seriousness, I am sorry. If Cosimo says anything, tell him it was me. Oh, I will, Biba said. I have no trouble ratting you out, you douche. Rich grinned. You love me really. Nah. Yup. If I wasn't so busy working, you'd be all over me. You're insatiable. Biba started to laugh. Rich's teasing was something she found entirely funny, mostly because he did it in such an open and non-creepy way. Rich, I've told you before. I like big bratwurst, not chipolatas. Gunter looked up eagerly. You like the German bratwurst? Biba grinned and didn't answer. Rich sighed and slumped on the sofa in his trailer. Well that was fun. What should we do tomorrow? Biba kicked his feet as she passed him on her way out. How about your job? Random, I know. Tyrant. Lazy skank. Rich grinned. Later, boo. Later. Bye, gun. Goodbye, bratwurst princess. Biba was still grinning as she went to find Stella, who was in a good mood. I heard that was you with the crazy glue. She actually hugged Biba, who rocked back a little at the unexpected embrace. Well done. Biba extracted herself. Well, you heard wrong. Not the prick Tracy didn't deserve it, but I wouldn't wish that duck pout on anyone. She smirked a little, and Stella grinned. Right? Stella cackled gleefully. She sat down, opening the mini-fridge and taking out a beer. She never thought to offer Biba one, but Biba was used to it. Gosh, what a day. And what a night I have planned. She waggled her eyebrows at Biba, who knew Stella wanted her to ask about it. Sighing, she pandered to her boss's wishes. How so? What I like to call the first offensive of the Make Cosimo Mine campaign. We're meeting later, to discuss the script and my character's motivation. She took a swig of beer and licked her lips slowly. But Biba felt a strange pang of jealousy. Stella, just a warning. The dude doesn't seem the type to have onset dalliances. He's pretty shy. Stella looked askance at her. And you know him so well because? I don't. It's just the impression I get. Stella shrugged. She stood and pulled open her robe. He'll stop being so shy when he sees this. Stella wasn't shy about showing off her stunning figure. Biba had seen it all before. 
Whatever you say. Listen, you got everything you need. I'm going to take off. Yes, fine. 4 a.m., call tomorrow. Be here at 3.30, please. Biba groaned. Gosh. That's not even a real time. You made it up. But she was amazed by the pleas. Stella grinned at her joke. Believe me, I'd rather sleep in until noon too, but we have to film some scenes with the early morning light. She finally stopped and looked at Biba. Get some rest. You look exhausted. Geez, what was going on with Stella? She was never this nice unless, ah uh, yes. Biba remembered now. Stella was always in a better mood when she was about to seduce someone. Biba didn't usually care, and she questioned herself why she did now. Fine. See you in the morning. Biba debated whether to go borrow the caretaker's dog again and go down to the lake, to walk the dog, she told herself, not to see if Cosimo would be there, but she was tired. Instead, she went to find Reggie. Weaving in between the trailers, she noticed it had gotten really dark just moments before she stumbled over some loose ground. She crashed down onto her knees, then gasped in pain as her right knee crunched against a stone. OWW, OWW, damn, ouch, ouch. She cursed some more as she clambered to her feet and tested her knee. It wasn't broken, but it still hurt like hell. Biba limped towards the manor house, but as she reached the end of the line of trailers, someone stepped out in front of her and blocked her way, and the light. Biba stepped back sharply in surprise, and then her pulse began to beat painfully as the figure reached for her. Seizing her by the shoulders, her assailant slammed her back hard against the last trailer. Cosimo chatted with Channing and Lars for a while, and then debated whether to go get some food. Deciding he wasn't hungry, instead he texted Nico to tell him he had arranged a car to collect him and bring him to the set the weekend after next. He waited for a reply, not expecting one so soon, but when his phone beeped, he hated the pathetic excitement he felt. It was only a text message, for Christ's sakes. His pleasure soon dissipated when he saw Nico's reply. Cool. That was it. Better than nothing, Cosimo thought, his heart sinking. What the hell would that weekend be like, with a monosyllabic teen in tow? Shit. Maybe he should have thought it through a little more. He wondered if he could persuade some of the younger members of the crew to help him out, help him find common ground. Rich and Gunter certainly would help, Nico would find their antics fun and cool. And what about Biba? She couldn't be more than twenty-two or three at the most. Gosh. So young. Cosimo was feeling every one of his forty years lately. Today, although he couldn't really sanction the loss of his supporting actor for even one day, he'd finally been shaken out of the listlessness he'd been feeling by laughter. Gosh, he missed just hanging loose and laughing at silly stuff, anything, a dumb TV show, or just friends being goofy. He had seen the friendship, the kinship between Biba, Rich, and Gunder. Also Biba's deep friendship with Reggie Quinn, the geeky sweet and Cosimo presumed gay co-writer of the film. He envied them the trust they had between each other, the connection. When Grace had died, he had let the friendships they'd shared slip away, unable to spend time with the people who had known them as a couple. It was just too damn painful. But now he wished he'd tried more. Maybe he should call one or two of them and test the water. You sound like such a sad sack. Cosimo sighed and grabbed his pack of cigarettes. He swore to Olivia he would quit smoking before he was forty, but he would have one at night, just to relax and decompress. He walked out into the night air, turned towards the lake and heard her scream. A hand clamped over her mouth, and the man's body pressed hard against hers. Biba's panic made it hard for her to identify her attacker, until he spoke. You little skank. Damon. Oh gosh. I know it was you with the crazy glue. What the heck did you think you were doing? It wasn't me. Now get your filthy hands off me. She tried to push him away, but he was twice the size of her and the product of steroids. He shoved her harder into the trailer wall. No, I don't think I will. Not until you've made it up to me, and since Stella seems to have shut me out, you can take her place. Biba was terrified as Damon tugged her jeans down to mid thigh. No, no, no. She wriggled and panicked, but he covered her mouth and said, 
Come on, beauty, give it up. I know you're not sleeping with Quinn, so what's the difference? Please. Stop. No, I don't want this. I don't care if you don't want it, you little skank. Who the hell are you to decide? Biba clamped her thighs tighter together, and Damon growling punched her hard in the stomach. All the air was pushed from her lungs as she gasped in pain. Then from out of nowhere a whirlwind of rage and fury yanked Damon up and threw him bodily across the ground away from Biba, and then gentle arms were wrapping a coat around her. It's okay sweetheart, we've got you. Rich, Gunter, detain this animal until the police get here. Reggie, go call the police, I'll take care of Biba. Through the fog of shock and terror, Biba realized it was Cosimo holding her so tenderly. She couldn't help but nestle into the comfort and safety of his arms. He picked her up and carried her into the manor house. The owner of the house took one look at Biba and rushed to help. Let's take her to the Lakewood suite, her gentle voice said. The bed's comfortable and there's a fire going. I'll make some tea. Cosimo carried her into the room as if she weighed nothing and set her down onto the counterpane. Biba panicked at the thought of him leaving her, but as he tucked the sheet around her, he stayed, his arms wrapped around her. It's okay, sweetheart. The police will be here soon and will get you checked out by a doctor. He was stroking her hair away from her face and she felt his lips press against her temple. Biba let the shock and terror seep from her bones. I'm so sorry, Cosimo, she said. I didn't see him coming. Don't worry, Biba. Damon won't ever bother you again if he wants to keep his career. He should be in jail. Did he hurt you? She nodded. But he didn't. I mean, I didn't let him. Cosimo moved so he could study her face. You did good. You did exactly what you were supposed to. There was a knock at the door, and Cosimo looked at her. Are you ready? She nodded. Please don't leave me alone. He leaned his forehead against hers. Never, he whispered. I'll never leave you. And in that moment, they both knew something had changed irrevocably between them. Chapter 4 The police interview was harrowing, hearing Biba having to relive what just happened. Damon was arrested, but the police warned them that with his connections and his money, he would be out on bail soon. Cosimo assured the police that security on set would be upped. He won't get near anyone here, he said, his voice like stone. He called Rich and Gunter to him, and after giving them an ass-kicking for dragging Biba into their antics, he told them to hire some more security. Any sign of Tracy, he's toast, you understand? Both Rich and Gunter looked shell-shocked by the evening's events. Rich looked past his boss to the closed door of the suite. Can we go see Biba? I need to apologize. Cosimo shook his head. The doctor is in with her, he's collecting evidence. Both Gunter and Rich's faces looked as sickened as Cosimo felt. Mine got. Gunter shook his head and Cosimo sighed. I think she needs some peace and quiet. No sooner were the words out of his mouth when Stella came crashing into the room, her robes and scarves flying, her face pale, but still beautifully made up. Cosimo, thank God. She put her hands on his chest and gazed into his eyes. How is she? Is she badly hurt? Are you? Cosimo extracted himself from Stella's grip and gently pushed her away. Biba's going to be fine. She just needs rest and TLC for a day or two. Will you cope without her? The way he framed it, the tone of his voice was very clear. You will cope without her whether you like it or not. Stella had obviously decided to go with being magnanimous. Of course, of course. Oh dear, what a terrible thing to happen. I blame myself. Cosimo nodded his head at Rich, and Gunter, at his signal, made their escape. Cosimo sat down, wishing he could smoke inside, and instead braced himself for Stella's drama. Stella threw her hands out wide. I knew he was trouble. I should have protected Biba, protected myself. I'm sorry, Cosimo. I really am. Oh gosh, it was going to be a long night. Stella, I think we've dealt with Damon now. There's no point in recriminations. Damon was the one to blame, no one else. 
Stella picked at her nails. Have you fired him? Obviously. Luckily, we already had someone lined up in case we ran into trouble with Damon. Stella smiled. You obviously knew his reputation. He wasn't my first choice with this film. The studio wanted him. I think they wanted to capitalize on your off-screen relationship. Stella laughed softly. Such as it was. It was never serious, Cosimo, you know that. I wasn't ready to get serious about anyone until... She slid her eyes demurely away from his. Well, Cosimo had to stop himself from rolling his eyes. Luckily, the next moment, the doctor came out from Biba's room. Cosimo stood to shake his hand. She'll be okay, physically at least. Obviously, it's not my place to discuss my findings, so you'll have to ask Miss May. I have prescribed a sleeping tablet for tonight and advised her to take it. Just to make sure she gets some rest. Thank you, doctor. I hope. Can she have visitors? Stella interrupted Cosimo, and the doctor finally noticed her. His eyes widened a little, obviously a little starstruck. Well, she did say only Mr. DeLuca or Mr. Quinn. Then that's final, Cosimo said firmly. Doctor, thank you. He waited until the doctor had gone, before turning to Stella. Stella, thank you, but I've got this from here. I'll let you know in the morning if anything changes. Stella was about to argue, but at that moment, Reggie, breathless, fraught, came into the room. Is she okay? Is Biba okay? Cosimo calmed him down. You can go in, he said gently, patting his shoulder. She wants to see you. He nodded to Stella, a dismissal, and was relieved when she took the hint. Let me know if you need anything. She touched his chest again, then left. Her scent, heavy and seductive, followed her, and Cosimo sighed. He sat down heavily, finally alone, and tried to process the horror of what had happened. No doubt the studio would be outraged, but at least he could defend himself there. Damon had been their choice. They would scramble to spin the story how they wanted it, and they would want Cosimo and Biba to keep their mouths shut. Cosimo didn't care about himself, but if the studio decided she was replaceable, no. He would protect her until they backed off, that was a no-brainer. They didn't get to employ a predator and then blame the victim. The hell with them! Anger was roiling away inside him, but more than that, he couldn't stop hearing that scream, her panicked soul-crushing scream. Biba struck him as someone who didn't scare easily, but the cry she gave was one of pure terror. Gosh, poor kid. He rubbed his eyes, drained. Screw this world and all the predators in it. He didn't care that now, he would have to scrap a couple of days filming. He knew who he would call to replace Damon, his old friend Sifrido Tofaro. Sifrido was just making it in Hollywood after being an A-plus lister in Italian movies for over a decade. He would be perfect for the part of Henry in this thing. He'd call him in the morning. Cosimo heard Reggie come out of Biba's room and looked up. She okay? Reggie nodded, looking drawn. Yeah, she'll be fine. Just shocked, I think. It well, it's not the first time. Never mind. Look, thanks, Cosimo, truly. Thanks for looking out after her. Anytime. Reggie nodded. You staying up here? For peace of mind. Reggie smiled at him. Cool. Biba's still awake if you want to go in. I know she wants to thank you herself. There's no need but I'll go and say good night. Thanks Reggie. See you in the morning. Biba heard the soft knock at the door, and her heart began to beat a little faster. Come in. She almost sighed with pleasure when Cosimo came in. Gosh, the man was so freaking beautiful. That was the only word for him. The sedative the doctor had given her was kicking in, and her mind was a little swirly. She smiled at him. Hello again, savior. His smile was sweet. Nothing anyone else wouldn't have done. How are you feeling? She nodded. All right. A little dopey, the doctor gave me the good stuff. Cosimo laughed. Good, you deserve it. Look, take tomorrow off. Hell, take as long as you need off. 
She held out her hand, and he took it, winding his fingers between hers as he sat on the side of the bed. His thumb stroked a gentle pattern over the back of her hand. Thank you, Cosimo. I mean it. Cosimo hesitated before tracing a finger down her cheek. I'll never let anyone hurt you, he said, his voice breaking. Damon is in jail. If he doesn't want to stay there, he'll never come near you or this set again, I promise. He sighed. I'm so sorry this happened, Biba. I've already kicked Rich's butt. Her eyes opened wide. Please don't fire them. I won't, don't worry. Damon was a ticking time bomb. Reggie tells me he was harassing you before. A little. Nothing I couldn't handle. Cosimo smiled. I believe you. They gazed at each other, still holding hands. The silence stretched but neither felt awkward. Finally Cosimo, his eyes curious, gave a short laugh. What is this happening here? Biba, her face burning, smiled. I don't know. But I, I like it. Cosimo stroked her hands. Me too. Gosh, she wanted to kiss him so badly, but she knew it would be wrong. He was her boss, and he'd just saved her from being mishandled or worse. Friends is always a good start, she said quietly, and Cosimo nodded. God knows I could use a few. Biba squeezed his hand. I'm sorry about your wife, Cosimo. Reggie told me about her. Thanks, sweetheart. Hey, listen, my son is coming down from Seattle in a week or so. He's, let's just say he's 16 and not that fond of his dad at the moment. If you have any ideas on how to entertain him, I'm all ears. Biba smiled. I'll get thinking about it. Cosimo nodded and reluctantly, it seemed, released her hand. He leaned forward and pressed his lips to her forehead. Get some rest now, Biebs. See how you feel in the morning. Her whole body was crying out for him to kiss her mouth, but he got up and left the room, shooting her a final, devastating smile before he closed the door behind him. Biba lay back, feeling sleep begin to creep over her body. Her stomach ached where Damon had punched her, but she didn't care. She was okay. And she had a new friend. In the moments before she fell asleep, she told herself she wasn't falling for Cosimo de Luca, but she knew, deep down, that wasn't true. Chapter 5 In the morning, Biba woke, her head foggy from the sleeping tablet. She rolled over in bed and looked at the alarm clock. 5 a.m. She lay back sighing. So much for the tablet. Her stomach growled and she realized she was starving, her hunger probably what had woken her up. She slid from the bed and tugged a robe around herself. Opening the door to the suite, she was amazed to see Cosimo, sprawled in a chair, his head resting on his hand. He'd stayed. Her emotions in turmoil, Biba crouched down by his side. Cosimo. Her voice was a whisper. He didn't move. Biba, her hand trembling, touched him, her hand resting on his stomach lightly. Cosimo. Cosimo opened his eyes slowly and gazed at her. Biba was almost breathless. Cosimo's hand covered her hand resting on his stomach, but he stayed silent. Biba leaned in and kissed his mouth just once, lightly. Biba opened her eyes. Damn. Oh damn. What a dream to have now, and damn her subconscious for waking her up before she could imagine what it would be like to sleep with Cosimo de Luca. She pushed the sheets on the bed back, her body a bit cold and stiff. Her stomach ached badly and when she pulled her t-shirt up, she saw the bruised imprint of Damon's knuckles on her skin. Bastard. Biba rolled out of bed, giving a little groan. It was still early, the pale blue light of dawn peeking through the window. Biba pulled her sneakers on and crept out of the room. Just like in her dream, Cosimo was asleep in an easy chair in the sitting room, and she smiled to herself. She found a wool throw and gently draped it on him. He looked like he needed the sleep, and she found herself longing to trace the violet shadows under his eyes with her fingertip. She found a scrap of paper and hurriedly scribbled a note before he woke up. Cosimo. Thank you so much for what you did for me last night. I can never repay you. I'm feeling much better today, so I'll be back at work. I'll try to think of some fun things you can do with your son. 
Thank you again. Biba. Biba paused, then erased her name and wrote, Your friend, always Biba. She balanced it on his stomach where she was sure it wouldn't fall off, resisting the temptation to stroke the hard muscle beneath the light cotton shirt, and left him to sleep. She walked slowly back to the trailers, wondering if she should go straight to Stella's. It must be nearly 6 a.m. already, and they had a 7 a.m. call. She opened the door to the trailer to see Stella already awake and dressed. Biba half smiled at her boss. Hey. Hey yourself. Stella studied her. How are you feeling? Sore but otherwise fine. Did you want me to get some coffee? I have it coming. Breakfast for both of us. Biba blinked. What? Stella smiled. Biba. You've been through a bad night. Come on sit down. You're not working today. Stella, of course, wouldn't be Stella unless she got the gossip on any situation, and so she made Biba tell her everything. To Biba's relief, Stella didn't linger on the attack, but rather how Cosimo acted afterwards. He was sweet, Biba told her, sweet and professional. That was almost the truth. She still felt the touch of his hand on her cheek, the tenderness, the intimacy of the gesture, but she was damned if she'd share that detail with Stella. She knew what Stella wanted, of course. She wanted to know if Cosimo had talked about her. She didn't care if Biba got to spend time with the director. It never occurred to Stella that Cosimo and Biba might share a connection, and the idea of an attraction between them would be laughable to the blonde movie star. Biba was grateful for that fact. It meant Stella wouldn't be jealous if Cosimo and Biba were to talk. And gosh, she wanted to talk to him, find out about him, his son, his life. She'd had a taste of what a friendship with him could be like, and Biba wanted more. After breakfast, Stella appeared to forget she had given Biba the day off, but Biba was grateful for the list of chores Stella barked at her. Lazing around wasn't Biba's style, and the quicker she got back to work, she figured, the quicker her colleague's fascination with what had happened would dissipate. Cosimo was surprised when he saw Biba back at Stella's side on the set. He smiled at the young woman and she grinned back. You okay? He mouthed to her and she nodded, her sweet face lighting up. Cosimo felt a shift inside him. Biba May was nearly half his age, but there was something in her nature, her spirit, the way she dealt with Stella Reckless, that belied her young age. She was an old soul, like him. She was beautiful, but that wasn't what drew him to her. Cosimo had met, seen, even slept with some of the most beautiful women in the world and knew very well that beauty meant nothing at the end of it all. Kindness, intelligence, humor, that's what he looked for. He stopped himself. Whoa. He was thinking about what he looked for in a woman? That was progress. That's what Grace would have called it, progress. You would like Biba, Grace, but I wouldn't look for your approval now, and you wouldn't want me to. Can I really move on? Cosimo watched Biba move around with the crew, laughing and joking with them, but remaining efficient and responsible at the same time. Cuz. You ready? Lars, his assistant director, called over to him, and Cosimo switched back into director mode. Filming went smoothly. The man playing Thornton, Stella's character Lucis' much older husband, was an Italian star, one who had made his name decades before Stella was even born. Franco Dascali was an old-fashioned gentleman, respectful but flirtatious with the female members of crew. He had little time for diva antics, but he had taken a shine to Biba, and she in turn adored the older man. He was funny and erudite, and she loved talking to him about movies and his career. Now, as he waited to film his next scene, he beckoned Biba over. Buongiorno, Biba May. Biba giggled. Franco always called her by her full name, and Biba wasn't sure if it was because he thought it was her full name, like Biba May blogs, or if he knew better and just liked using her full name. Franco was mischievous like that. Buongiorno, Franco. You got everything you need? I'm fine. Wishing Stella would hurry up and read her lines. She seems to be flirting with Cosimo, instead of acting. Biba glanced over at Stella, who was rubbing her hand up and down Cosimo's arm. Biba looked away, trying to quell the stab of jealousy that made her stomach hurt. 
Still, she couldn't help but talk about Cosimo to Franco. You've worked with Cosimo before, right? Many times since he started his career. There was a strange hint of paternal pride in Franco's voice. I've never seen anyone with his vision before. I should have retired a decade ago, but I wanted to continue to work with him. I only act in Cosimo's films now. Biba was touched. He's a good guy. He is, he truly is. I knew his mother, you know, back in the day. Franco smiled at Biba. You remind me of her. How so? Your kindness. She would like you. Franco looked back at Stella, and his mouth twitched up in a smirk. Unlike Ms. Reckless. She's not subtle, is she? Biba grinned. Nope. Not in any way. In a strange way, I kind of admire her for saying what she wants. But there's no mystery, no allure. Franco studied her. Cosimo told me what happened, Biba May. I'm so sorry. Biba felt choked up, so she just nodded. Thanks, Franco. Filming went smoothly for the rest of the day, and it wasn't until they broke for a meal that Rich came to find her. For once, his bright blue eyes were serious. Beebs, I'm so sorry. I had no idea Damon would react like that. Biba smiled at him. Don't worry about it, Rich, really. He's gone, that's all that matters. Did Cosimo ball you out? And then some, but I deserved it. He smiled at her ruefully. But he did tell me you asked him not to fire me. I'm grateful, Biebs, really. Biba hugged him. Rich had a kind heart even if he was sometimes thoughtless. He squeezed her in his arms. They'd known each other long enough now, that they were as close as. Beeps? Yup. Maybe some night, I could take you out. Whoa. Biba looked up at him. There was no denying he was utterly gorgeous, all dark hair and bright blue eyes and sensual smile, and she didn't mind him asking. She was flattered, but... She shot a quick look at Cosimo. Out of your league, girl, and you know it. He's a grown man. You're just a kid. She smiled at Rich. That would be fun, I do have to warn you that I'm, um, not looking for anything serious. Rich grinned. Me neither. Just thought we could have some fun. The kind of fun Rich wanted wasn't what she was looking for either, but Biba thought she could be honest with him later. Rich wasn't threatening at all, and at least Biba felt safe with him in a way which she hadn't felt with anyone ever. Cosimo looked over at them now and smiled. Stop it. She gave him a half-smile, then moved out of his line of vision. Yeah, you need to tell Rich it can't go anywhere. But the thought of a night out with fun, loving Rich was probably what she needed right now, and if something grew out of it, at least it would distract her from thinking about Cosimo de Luca. After dinner, Cosimo caught up to her as she was walking slowly to the trailers. Hey. Her skin trembled with pleasure, and she smiled up at him. Even his hay had so much intimacy in it. She wanted to fold herself into his arms, breath in his woody, spicy scent, press her mouth against his lips. Jeez. Stop. How are you feeling? She nodded. I'm good, honestly. Stella's had me running everywhere, so I've not had time to sit and brood. Which is good. Cosimo frowned a little. But you've processed what happened. Biba didn't know how to answer him. It happened. I can't let it stop me. His eyes were so serious, so intense on hers. Sweet girl, maybe you should see a counselor? I'm worried about the PTSD aspect. Gosh, he was lovely. I'm honestly okay, Cosimo, I swear. But I appreciate your concern. Please touch me, please don't touch me. Biba couldn't look away from his gaze. Cosimo's fingers reached for her face, then dropped as if he realized what he was about to do. He looked away. There's a mist out on the lake. I'll be walking down there tonight about ten, if you and caretaker's dog are around. If you feel like talking. Biba could see his cheeks were a little flushed, and she felt her own face burning. She nodded. That sounds like something I could do. Gosh, the whole thing was so awkward and yet intoxicating. Good. See you later then. 
He smiled, the corners of his eyes wrinkling, then he nodded and walked away. Biba stared after him. Why the hell did this man have such an effect on her? He watched Biba May talking to Cosimo De Luca. That was interesting. There was clearly something going on between them if the way they looked at each other was anything to go by. Good. It would mean Stella's assistant would be distracted, and he could gain access to the blonde. She haunted his dreams and had done so since he was a teenager. He didn't care that she was a lot older than him. Once filming was done, they would go away to his cabin down in the Oregon woods, and there with his knife, he would show her how much she meant to him before he joined her in the forever world of death. Chapter 6 It was darker tonight, the moon covered by clouds, as Biba walked down to the lake. She decided against bringing the dog, and she told herself it was because the dog would get bored if they sat around to do nothing but talk. Cosimo's smile when she saw him made her heart soar. Hey, she said shyly. Cosimo nodded towards a little jetty away along the shore. It's private. At the end of the jetty there was a small bench, above which a lamp sputtered out weak light. Cosimo took his sweater off and draped it around Biba's shoulders when she shivered. The cream-colored muslin shirt he had on was slightly see-through, and Biba had to look away from the shape of his sculpted chest, the flat stomach, the indentation of his navel. They sat down on the bench closely, her thigh resting against his. The mist hung around them in a ghostly white fog. Cosimo's arm was along the top of the bench, his fingers close to Biba's arm. If she moved just a little, it would be as if his arm was around her. She felt breathless and shy. Cosimo was studying her. It's beautiful here, isn't it? She nodded. Gorgeous. They gazed at each other. Cosmo's eyes were somber. Biba, if you knew what was going through my mind right now, but I'm so much older than you, and I'm your boss. I know. Not that much older than me. Cosimo smiled slightly. May I ask how old you are? Biba thought about adding a couple of years to her age, but she knew she couldn't lie to this man. Twenty-two. He groaned and she chuckled. Cosimo, you can't be older then. Then she remembered he had a sixteen-year-old son. You must have had Nico very young. Barely a teen. Cosimo laughed, his smile lighting up his face. Gosh, you're nearer his age than mine and... Biba moved in and pressed her lips to his unable to hold back any longer. Cosimo kissed her back, his fingers sliding into her hair, his lips tender against hers. When they broke away, they were both breathless. Cosimo closed his eyes and leaned his forehead against hers. We shouldn't have done that but gosh, I'm glad we did. Biba cradled his face in her palms. I've been dreaming about it since last night. Me too. I'm just scared it makes me a dirty old man. They both laughed. Cosimo took her hand and pressed it against his chest, over his heart. Feel that? It hasn't beat like that since. Since Grace. Biba nodded, comfortable talking about Cosimo's wife. I'm honored. Gosh, you're beautiful, he whispered. Biba, we're going to go back to my room, and we're going to talk. Okay? She nodded, but knew in her heart he was about to tell her that they couldn't continue. She felt like crying. She wanted him so badly, but it was just her screwed up brain that was putting the skids on this. That, and the fact that this man couldn't possibly want a messed up kid with no experience and one hell of a damaged past. Please don't send me away. Biba was about to stop him and beg him not to leave her, but then a scream pierced the night and shots rang out. Looking at each other in horror, Cosimo and Biba only hesitated a moment before both of them took off, running towards the sound of the gunfire. Chapter 7 Stella was hyperventilating as Gunter tried to comfort her. Someone tried to take me, she wailed as she saw Cosimo and Biba arrive. We heard gunfire, Cosimo said, looking at Gunter, who nodded. It was rich. He took off chasing the guy. Stella, sniffing and obviously genuinely scared, left Gunder's arms and went to Cosimo. Cosimo had no choice but to put his arms around the distressed woman. It's okay. 
You're okay. Rich came back then, sweating, his eyes darting everywhere. Guy got away, I'm sorry. Stella, you okay? Stella, happy in Cosimo's arms, nodded. It was just scary. How did he get in? Well, unfortunately, it's pretty open here, and the studio won't pay for total protection, Rich was breathless. It's difficult to police with just us. He looked at Cosimo. Sorry, boss. Not your fault. Listen, hire some more guys. I'll pay for it. Stella, do you feel safe in your room? She shook her head. Maybe I should move closer to your room, Cosimo. Biba felt a flash of jealousy run through her, especially when Cosimo nodded. We'll get you a suite in the big house. Biba can stay with you, then we can protect you both. Stella didn't look enthusiastic, and Biba agreed with her. Sharing a suite would mean neither could indulge in secret assignations, was Cosimo doing it on purpose? Biba trailed behind them as they walked up to the manor. She felt miserable and guilty. Miserable because she had blown it spectacularly with Cosimo, and guilty because clearly Stella had been in danger. What the hell was going on? Rich caught up with her. You okay, boo? She nodded but felt even more guilty. She'd said yes to a date with Rich, and not even an hour later, she was naked with their boss. Gosh, she was a mess, wasn't she? Maybe Cosimo was right. Maybe the incident with Damon had messed her up more than she liked to admit. She got the answer to one question a little later, when she and Stella were alone. They were changing for bed, Stella walking around completely naked, Biba shimmying into her shorts and t-shirt discreetly as always. She felt Stella watching her. Were you and Cosimo together earlier? Stella was smoking a cigarette, blowing the smoke out of the window. You seem to arrive at my trailer at the same time. Ah. So, Stella had been watching them. I was down by the lake at the same time as all, Biba said casually. We just said hello when we heard the gunshots. She was amazed at how easily the lie slid from her lips, but she really didn't want to deal with Stella's jealousy tonight. Ha. Huh. Stella was fishing, Biba could tell. I didn't know you two were on chatting terms. He was being polite. He's right to withdraw, she thought, but the idea of being distant with him now was making her chest hurt. She finally fell into a fitful sleep, only to be woken by Stella a couple of hours later, showing her the note that had been sent to her. My darling Stella. Know that tonight was just the beginning. We will together soon, my love, and you will never have to worry about anything ever again. If anyone tries to stop our love, know that I will do anything to stop them. Anything. Your director, the security teams, that pretty assistant of yours, all of their lives will be forfeit if they try to stop me. Soon, my darling. Soon. Cosimo had called in the FBI, and they had agreed. Guy's a nutball, Luke Harris, the FBI agent, said with a nod to them as they all gathered in the manor's dining hall. Luckily for you, nutballs are our thing. Biba hid a smirk at the agent's words, shooting a look at Reggie. She knew he was thinking the same thing, this dude was a swaggering moron. Still, this wasn't about their opinions, rather Stella's safety. Biba didn't even register that she too had been threatened, until Cosimo spoke up. Agent Harris, I need reassurances that Stella, Biba and the rest of our staff are safe. We'll do what we can, but I have to say, with respect to Mr. Furlow and Mr. Wolf, your security here is lax. That this guy could break in and return later to leave a note. Maybe he left the note before he tried to take Stella. Biba spoke up, wanting to defend Cosimo. It would make more sense. Harris looked miffed. I don't see. It would make more sense. After all, he threatened to take Stella and then tried to do exactly that. Perhaps Stella didn't get the note before, because it was at the manor's reception? Cosimo's voice was smooth, but Biba detected anger in his tone. She was grateful for the backup. Harris cleared his throat, two spots of pink appearing high on his cheeks. We'll check it out. But what I said about the security stands. You need to beef it up. Already in motion, Cosimo shot a look at Rich, who nodded. 
We have 10 more security guards, and the manor house has offered to close down completely to outside people. It's a start. Harris looked back at Biba and Stella. Be vigilant, little ladies. Don't go anywhere on your own. Biba's eyes narrowed and Stella looked angry. Such good advice, Agent Harris. Our tax dollars well spent. The sarcasm went over his head, and he left shortly after. You asked for miracles, Theo. I give you the FBI, Reggie drawled in his best Alan Rickman diehard impression. It broke the tension, even Cosimo grinned. Hey listen, I'm sorry folks. I've dealt with a lot of weirdos in my time, but I promise, I'll do everything I can to protect you. He sighed, rubbing his eyes. He looked tired and drawn, and Bebo wanted more than anything to hold him, tell him everything would be fine. For the rest of the day, however, he kept his distance. They had all agreed that working would be best for them all to decompress and distract themselves from the unpleasantness of Stella's stalker. Stella, of course, was milking it for all it was worth, but when she was acting, Biba had to give it to her. It lent a certain vulnerability to her character, which made her more likable. However diva-like and nasty Stella could be, the one thing Biba loved about her was her performances. There was a reason Stella Reckless was the biggest movie star in the world, sheer magnetism and radiance. She was luminescent in front of the camera. Stella loved acting even more than she loved herself, and it showed. When she wasn't causing trouble for the sake of it, she could deliver searing, hypnotizing performances which were peerless. Today was a day like that, and Biba watched Franco, her co-star in today's scenes, rise to the challenge. Despite the vast age difference, they were magnetic together, the romance between them utterly believable. During the afternoon, Damon's replacement, Sifrido, arrived on set and had an immediate impact on the cast and crew. Friendly, flirty, easygoing, Sifrido and Franco bonded straight away, and Biba could tell they would have fun teasing Stella. For her part, Stella didn't seem to mind, she loved the extra attention. Sifrido also had an effect on Cosimo. Biba could tell they were old friends with their easy joking around and the way Cosimo's tension level seemed to ease. She was glad, although he still wasn't meeting her gaze. Let it go. Give him time. But it still hurt. Biba distracted herself with work and talking to Rich and Gunter. Rich was quieter than usual and later, when she asked him if he was okay, he pulled her aside. Biebs, I can't leave this unsaid but I saw you. You and Cuz down by the lake. Her face flaming, Biba groaned. Gosh Rich, I'm so sorry. That was, it wasn't planned, I swear. And in the end, nothing happened. It was a moment of madness. I'm sorry. You don't owe me an apology, Rich said with a smile, or anything else. I can relate. We've all had that moment. I just didn't want to know that, and have you not know. It's okay, really. Biba looked at him. I do like you, Rich, a lot. This thing with Cosimo, I couldn't help myself, and maybe that tells me something. I gotcha. Hell listen, as long as we're friends. Always, Rich. Always. Rich grinned, nudging her shoulder. And if you like him, you should go for it. Cuz is a good guy. I don't think there will be a repeat of what happened between us, but thanks. Bebo was back in Stella's trailer even before Stella finished work for the day, and when her boss got back, she gave Biba a strange look. Biba looked up from her laptop. Oh sorry, was I meant to bring you something? No it's fine. It's just unlike you to hide away in here. Not hiding away, just catching up on emails. Even so. Stella sat down opposite her, tapping out a cigarette from her pack. Cosimo asked where you'd gone. Biba hid the thrill that went through her. Oh. Said he wanted to talk security with you. Okay. I should go find him. She got up, trying not to run right out of the trailer and go find him. She went through the mail and handed it to Stella. No nasties, but nothing much of interest either. Stella threw the stack on the table. I'll get to it. So, you and Cosimo seem to be connecting just as colleagues. Biba hated lying, but there it was. 
I better go find him, he may want to talk about your security detail. Okay. But there was an icy tone to Stella's voice, she didn't believe Biba's claims of simple friendship with Cosimo. Biba shrugged and left the trailer. At the manor, she asked the receptionist where Cosimo was. I think Mr. DeLuca is in his suite, the young man said with a smile. Want me to call up? Yes, please. Bibo waited patiently as he called Cosimo. A second later, he smiled at her. He says to go up. Heart pounding, she took the stairs to the second floor, needing the exercise to shed some nervous energy. Tapping lightly at Cosimo's door, she still jumped slightly when he opened it almost immediately. For a long moment they gazed at each other, then he smiled. Hey. Hey yourself. Come on in. He stood back to let her in, and as she passed, she smelled soap and shampoo, saw his dark curls were damp, his sweater freshly on. Her senses reeled, and she wobbled. Hey, are you all right? Cosimo caught her before she fell. Biba, mortified, nodded. Sorry, I forgot to eat today. He rolled his eyes and grinned at her. Now, I already know that's not like you. Gosh, why did his smile make her stomach hurt? Cosimo called down and ordered room service for them both. Little impromptu dinner party. Biba chuckled. Can it really be a party with just two? Cosimo considered. Okay, a sweet picnic. Nice. Cosimo laughed. Burgers okay with you? I ordered all the fixings. Perfect. I just forgot to eat today. Cosimo sat down next to her, and she leaned against him. He put his arm around her. Biba. I know what you're going to say. I'm too young, I'm damaged from my past, you can't take on someone with so much baggage. Cosimo gave her a sad smile. The first three are true. The last, not so much. Except, I can't take advantage of you. I would never be able to forgive myself if I caused you more pain. Biba nodded misery seeping through every cell in her body. I know. It's the responsible thing to do. He pressed his lips to her temple. It's not that I don't want you, Biba, because Lord knows I do. But I have a responsibility towards you, the movie, and my son, of course. Biba looked up at him. He was so damn beautiful she could cry. I know. Nico comes first. And hey, on the bright side, if we stop this before it begins, we have a good shot at being friends. She saw him visibly relax. I think so too. There's nothing I'd like more, well there's one thing, but that's not an option. Yet, Biba said, her voice was almost a whisper, willing him to agree. He met her gaze steadily. Yet, their eyes locked, and then his lips were against hers. Damn it, he said as they paused for air. Biba chuckled. Look, let's do this. When room service arrives, that's the holy line of demarcation. That's when we cross from whatever this is to just friends. Until then. He groaned and took her face in his hands, his lips hungry against hers. I hope they forget our order. Me too. But room service came quickly and efficiently, and Cosimo and Biba broke apart regretfully. As they sat down with their burgers, Biba smiled at him. Actually, once you see the wolverine way I eat fast food, you'll be put off me anyway. Cosimo laughed. Is that so? Biba took a huge bite of her burger, making a growling noise and chomping loudly. Cosimo laughed and followed suit until they were both laughing helplessly. Biba almost choked on her burger. Told you so. Cosimo reached over and wiped a smear of mustard from her bottom lip, making it tingle. You weren't exaggerating. So, as an Italian-American, are you big into pizza and stuff? Actually, I'm just Italian. I was born in Venice. Biba's eyebrows shot up. Really? Well dang that search engine. Ha. You googled me. Biba rolled her eyes. Of course I googled you, dude. I'm a millennial. Cosimo groaned again. Gosh, I feel old. Biba grinned. So, Mr. Italian, what's the food like over there? Sublime. Haven't you been? 
I thought I heard your father was stationed in Europe for a while. Germany. And he wasn't big on vacations. Or being a father. She didn't know why she blurted that out, but Cosimo nodded. From what you told me last night, I wouldn't think so. Gosh, you believe your child. He spat the words out, and Biba was touched he was so angry on her behalf. You'd think. It took me a while to figure out that it wasn't normal family behavior to be like that, and that it wasn't my fault. He failed me. My mom failed me. And I have every right to be angry about it. If I could go back and kill the guy who did this to you, I wouldn't hesitate. His green eyes were almost dangerous looking now, and a shiver went down Biba's spine. She could believe it. Thank you. She wanted to change the subject now. You must be looking forward to seeing Nico next weekend? Cosimo nodded, then sighed. Yes and no. I have a feeling that it'll be 24 hours of monosyllabic conversation and heavy teenage sighs. He is 16. Yeah. Look, this may be asking a huge favor, but... I'd love to, she said preempting his question. I can think up some cool stuff he might enjoy, I could bring Reggie too. He always seems to know the places to be in the city. Cosimo looked relieved. I'd be very grateful. I just can't reach him at the moment. Biba nodded, and for a few minutes they ate in companionable silence. Can I be personal for a moment? Cosimo nodded. Of course. Stop thinking you're old. You carry this world-weary look around with you, but look at you. You're only 40, and you look 15 years younger than that when you smile. I know losing your wife must have been the worst, the absolute worst. But she would want you to be happy, cuz. Biba blushed scarlet after her little speech. Who was she to lecture this grown-up? But he smiled at her. You're good at this friend thing. I try. Cosimo reached over and linked his fingers with hers. Biba could barely stand the tension between them and slowly withdrew her hand. I can't. I know, I'm sorry. They finished their meal and Biba stood. I had better go tell Stella that we just talked. We did just talk. True. She smiled at him as he walked her to the door. Thank you for dinner. He opened the door for her, but then shut it again before she could leave, closing his eyes. Biba. She pressed her lips to his. I know. Bye, buddy, she said softly, trying to make him smile, but he shook his head. If you only knew what I was thinking. She touched his face. I really do know. Good night, Cosimo. Good night, Biba. It was only when she knew she was truly alone that Biba let herself cry. Chapter 8 Nico will be here tomorrow morning, Cosimo told her a week later. He's coming down on the bus. I said I'd send a car for him. He's just showing his independence. Let him. Yes, a oh wise one. Biba chuckled, nudging him gently in the ribs as they stood in the craft services line. Cosimo wasn't one of those directors who demanded to be served first. When they had their meal, they sat down with Rich and Gunter. Gunter was in the middle of one of his rants. But why they exist at all? They are just demons disguised as fluffy bees but without the fluff. They are the devils. Rich looked bemused. Biba grinned at him. What's he talking about? Wasps? Damn wasps? Demons? They're just wasps, dude. Gunter grumbled to himself and Cosimo grinned. You have a strange relationship with the insect world, Gunter. I just don't know how they make a life. Biba scooped a spoonful of granola into her mouth. Cosimo's son is coming to Tacoma tomorrow. Cool. What are you going to do? Cosimo smiled. Biba's in charge of the day's activities. I like to call it the How to Amuse a Teen Challenge. I got you covered, cuz, Biba said, marveling at how easily they could be just friends in front of everyone else. When they had been alone this past week, they'd struggled not to break their new rule. More than a few kisses had sneaked through their holy line of demarcation. Nico was going to be so impressed, 
He'll tell all his friends what a cool dad he has. Cosimo snorted. When hell freezes over, maybe? Cosimo. Stella appeared, glancing at Biba with a very frosty look. Biba crunched her granola and ignored her. Can I borrow you for a sec? Sure. Cosimo followed Stella away from the group. Stella turned to face him. What are you doing with Biba? Excuse me? The late night talks, the hanging out. She's 21 years old and impressionable. I worry that she has a crush on you. Gosh, I hope so. Don't be ridiculous, Stella. She's my employee. I'm making sure that she is okay after the attack and that the studio's liability isn't put in jeopardy. Biba could sue us for what happened. Stella snorted. She wouldn't do that. I know her. She'll forget it easily enough. How well do you actually know Biba? Cosimo was curious. Well enough. Leave her alone, Cosimo. Look for someone your own age. Cosimo's sense of humor failed him then. Stella, for one thing, my friendship with Biba is not your business. Secondly, don't lecture me on appropriateness when you brought Damon Tracy to this set. He stalked off towards the manor, feeling more guilty than angry now. The truth was, he was falling for Biba, and he wasn't doing a whole lot to stop himself. He meant what he said to Stella, it was none of her business, and at least her suspicions had stopped her over-the-top seduction routines. She'd gotten the message, he wasn't interested in her. Cosimo hoped she wouldn't take her disappointment out on Biba, but he knew that was a very real possibility. Tomorrow, she would meet his son, a boy she was so much closer to in age and experience that Cosimo wondered if it would make a difference in his feelings for her. He didn't think so. He couldn't stop thinking about her, her soft lips, those big brown eyes, that caramel skin. Biba had gotten under his skin in a way no one ever had, not even Grace. He was going through his notes for the next week's filming when there was a knock at the door. He opened it to find his old friend Sifrido grinning at him. Sorry that I'm not a certain little cutie pie. Cosimo laughed. Sifrido knew him well. Is it that obvious? Only to those who know you well. Can I come in? Of course. Mini fridge is full if you want a beer. Hit me. Cosimo snagged two beers from the fridge and handed one to Sifrido. So, you need to catch me up on your life. What's it been, two years? Five and don't change the subject. What gives between you and the lovely Biba? Cosimo sighed, his shoulders slumping. I'll sound like a creep. Not possible, buddy. Cosimo grinned. You sound more American every day. You're prevaricating. Cosimo had forgotten that Sifrido was a no-nonsense kind of guy. Cosimo shrugged. I'm crazy about her. She's like a blast of cool, clean air. She's funny, smart, and doesn't take any shit. And she's beautiful. That's incidental. Sifrido raised his eyebrows but didn't call Cosimo on his statement. Is she okay after what Damon did to her? Cosimo hesitated. I can't answer that for sure. Frido, what I'm about to tell you can't leave this room. You have my word. We almost made love the other evening. Out on the jetty on the lake. Sifrido looked impressed. Almost. She stopped it and of course I was okay with that. She told me she was conflicted. Something happened to her when she was a kid. Is she a maiden? Cosimo nodded, feeling disloyal to Biba, but he had to talk things through with someone. To you or her? Sifrido took a swig of his beer. Don't you think you putting the skids on a relationship you both wanted would make her feel even worse? Cosimo felt his heart lift a little. He leaned forward. There's also the fact I'm her boss. So? How long will you be filming here? Another six weeks. That's nothing. If you want her but are afraid of lawsuits, wait six weeks. See how you both feel then. You deserve love, my old friend. Old is right. Gibberish. You're still young. When Sifrido had said goodnight, 
Cosimo went to bed, but lay awake thinking about Biba. He dreamed of her, but it wasn't pleasant dreams of lovemaking, but nightmares about someone stalking her, hurting her, taking her away from him. At 4 a.m. Cosimo woke, shivering and sweating. He got out of bed and poured himself a scotch, draining it in one go. He couldn't bring himself to go back to sleep that night, not wanting to see any more horrifying visions of the woman he was falling in love with, bleeding out and dying in his arms. Chapter 9 The nightmares were blown away the next morning by Biba's cheerful smile at the craft service trailer. Hey dude. Today's the day. For a moment, Cosimo was confused. Ha. Huh. Biba pretended to knock on his head. Your son, remember? Gosh, Nico, of course. He grinned at her. I'm glad you're cheerful about today, because I guarantee Nico won't be. If he hated the idea that much, he wouldn't have come. There's still time for him to cancel. Biba grinned at his woebegone face. Is that so? So that handsome young boy over there isn't your son then? Cosimo turned in surprise to see Nico, taller than ever, stalking towards him. He stepped forward to hug his son, which Nico accepted to Cosimo's surprise. He stepped back and studied his son. Nico had always looked more like Grace than Cosimo. He had Grace's Korean coloring, straight jet black hair teased up into spikes and dark brown, almost black eyes. Only his build and his height seemed to come from Cosimo. Cosimo stepped away and introduced his son to Biba, who held out her fist for a bump. Nico's eyes lit up when he saw her, and Cosimo hid a smile. Like father, like son, completely unable to resist Biba May's charms. Cosimo drove Nico, Biba, and Reggie into the city, and to Bob's Java Jive coffeehouse on South Tacoma Way. Biba sat up front with him, Nico chivalrously opened the door for her. Apparently, though, that was the extent of his engagement. Biba and Reggie both tried to start a conversation with the teen, and although he was polite, he quickly shut down any talk they might have shared. Cosimo shot Biba a look as she tried again, and she winked at him. She wasn't going to give up on Nico, and it warmed Cosimo's heart. At the coffee house, which was shaped like a giant coffee pot, Biba got out. Oh, my bad. I don't think it opens until later. Hey, excuse me, sir. Cosimo watched her walk up to a man who was washing the outside windows of the place and converse with him for a few minutes. Working her magic again, she came back to them. He says he can only do filter coffee at this hour, but he'll let us in as a favor. As Reggie and Nico got out of the car, Cosimo took her arm. You are amazing, he murmured, and she beamed at him. I shamelessly dropped your name. It worked. Cosimo laughed and reluctantly let go of her arm. He wanted to hold her hand, but it would be inappropriate, especially in front of Nico. As they sat in the coffeehouse chatting, Nico seemed to thaw a little, a very little, but still looked bored. Biba nudged him with her elbow. Come on, dude. This place is awesome. Nico nodded reluctantly. It's okay. Man, you are hard work, you know that? Biba grinned at him to soften the judgment. You're such a teenager. That got him. Dude, you're like five seconds older than me. Try five years. You know what happened to me when I was 16? I learned the art of conversation. She crossed her eyes at him, making a face, and Nico chuckled. The sound of his son laughing made Cosimo's heart hurt. He hadn't heard that sound in years. So, he said carefully, not wanting to break the mood, where have our tour guides planned for next? Well, Biba said, we assume that you and your friends have done pretty much everything in Seattle, so Reg and I researched some places to go. Fall City for starters. Treehouses, dude. Nico nodded. Grandma took me there last year. Biba's face fell. Really? Dang, I was looking forward to that. Cosimo grinned at her sulky face. I'm sure Nico wouldn't mind going again. No, it's okay. I can go another time. Um, Reg? Biba looked at her friend helplessly. She'd clearly set her heart on the treehouse. Cosimo told himself he would take her there one day. It's a drive, but we could go to the observatory at Goldendale. 
Nico shrugged. Space not your nerd thing? Okay. Reggie was flicking through his phone. We could catch a seaplane up to Friday Harbor? Done it. Cosimo shot a warning glance at his son, who ignored him. Look, it's okay, Nico said. We can just hang out at a mall or something. Thrilling, Cosimo said dryly, and Nico flushed. He slid out of his chair. Gotta go pee. Cosimo sighed and looked apologetically at Biba and Reggie. I'm sorry, folks. I told you he was hard to entertain. I have a backup plan, Biba said, and both men looked at her. She grinned. Do you trust me? She addressed this to Cosimo, who nodded. With my life. Why? She sniggered to herself. Because I'm about to say something to your 16-year-old son that might seem shocking but just trust me. I think it may break the ice. Cosimo looked at Reggie, who nodded. Okay. The floor is yours. Still, when Biba said to Nico on his return the words, Right Nick, we're going somewhere that celebrates blowjobs, Cosimo choked on his coffee and Reggie put his head in his hands. Nico though perked up. Really? Really? Biba drove them this time to Dock Street, and they all got out of the car. Nico looked around. I don't get it. Biba tugged him along. Come on. They followed her over a bridge towards a cone-shaped building on the other side. Cosimo assumed that, that was where they were headed, but then halfway across, Biba stopped. Ta-da! Nico De Luca, I present to you a celebration of blowjobs. She indicated the wall in front of them, and Nico began to laugh. Oh, very clever. It was a wall with individual showcases of spectacularly blown glass sculptures. Cosimo was both relieved and grateful that now Nico was laughing. He saw his son relax. You are a nutjob, you know that? Nico was saying to Biba now. She slung her arm around his shoulders. That'll teach you to be all teenage on us. Come on, you can actually walk under some of these lovelies too. All four of them strolled along the bridge underneath the glass ceiling. Cosimo and Reggie watched Biba and Nico joke around with each other. She's amazing, Cosimo said, trying to keep most of his adoration out of his voice. Reggie nodded. She is that. Listen, I know you two have become friends. Maybe you could help me out with something. Sure. It's Biba's birthday in a week. I haven't any idea what to do for it other than a party, but that seems lame. Also, Biba's not wild about them. Maybe we could do something at the manor, out on the lake. Fireworks, maybe? Cosimo nodded. Sounds perfect. I'll set it up. Realizing then that he was talking to Biba's best friend, and maybe he, Cosimo was overstepping, stopped. I mean, if you want me to, Reg. Biba's your person. Reggie grinned. It's okay, I know what you mean, and I'd like your help. That's why I asked. You think Stella would be okay with it? I really don't care if she isn't, Cosimo said. It's Biba's birthday. I mean, he said, shaking his head in disbelief as he saw Nico and Biba play fight, look what she's doing for me. Later, as Reggie and Nico were trying glass blowing for themselves, Cosimo took Biba aside. I can't thank you enough for today. Blowjobs? Biba snickered, beaming up at him. And I had a backup to my backup plan, the Afterglow Vista in Friday Harbor, the Mima Mounds in Olympia. Cosimo was laughing. Nico had truly relaxed now, and as they went for food at the Southern Kitchen on 6th Avenue, he even talked about school and what he had planned for his future. College, said Cosimo firmly, and Nico grinned. Don't worry, Pa. It's on my list. Subject. Biba was stuffing fried chicken and gravy into her mouth. Nico smiled. Bathymetry. Ah, Biba said, you like the ocean? Nico looked surprised. You know what bathymetry is? Biba grinned. Just because I went on a click a link fest on Wikipedia once. I'm obsessed with volcanoes. Cosimo looked surprised, and Reggie chuckled. Yeah, she'll do that. Random stuff. She's a space nerd too. True story. So, you want to work for? 
she addressed the question back to Nico. Noah. And I want to study underwater volcanoes. He laughed, bemused to find a kindred spirit amongst his dad's friends. He shot his father an admiring look, and Cosimo knew he had won major points for having Biba on his team. More reason to be grateful to her. Have you been up Mount Rainier? Biba had finished her fries and was now stealing them from Nico's plate. Nico shook his head. Never got around to it. Why don't you and your dad go tomorrow? Before you go back to Seattle? Clever Biba. He squeezed her leg under the table and nodded at Nico. You want to? Yeah, that sounds cool. Cosimo didn't know whether to laugh or cry. His son thought hanging out with him was cool. He felt his throat close with emotion. Biba glanced at him, feeling his body tense beside her. Sliding her hand under the table, she entwined her fingers with his and squeezed them. That was the moment Cosimo De Luca fell in love with Biba May. Chapter 10 Biba had fallen asleep in the car on the way back to Lakewood Manor, and when they reached the place, Cosimo felt like he couldn't offer to help her back to her room. He had Nico to consider, and besides, she was more than capable of finding her own way to her room. She hugged Nico hard. Have a great day tomorrow with your dad, okay? I will, and thanks for today. When Nico had gone to bed, Cosimo stripped down to his underwear and turned off the light. He saw his phone blinking with a message. Laying down on the pull-out bed, he grabbed his phone and scrolled through to the message. Biba. Progress, progress, progress. I think we broke though the teenage barrier. BXX. Cosimo chuckled softly. All thanks to you, my lovely Biba. I can't thank you enough. CXX. There were few moments before she replied and when he read it, his heart began to beat faster. Show me. Tomorrow night. Show me. And that was all she needed to say. Chapter 11 Biba jiggled her legs under the dinner table so much that Reggie actually held her knees down. Why are you so hyped up? Biba felt her face redden. Because tonight is going to be my first time with the man of my dreams. Nothing, just excess energy. Good day yesterday, huh? Very. Nico's a good kid. Can't see any of Cosimo in him, can you? Biba thought about it. Didn't notice. He's fun when you break the ice. That's like Cosimo. Reggie studied her, his brown eyes searching her face. You like him? Who, Nico? No, Cosimo. Think I didn't notice the chemistry between you? Biba said nothing, but she could feel her face burning. Reggie nudged her, lowering his voice. Go for it, Biebs. He's obviously into you. Not yet, but later tonight. Gosh, she had to talk about it to someone. Come with me. They walked down to the lake and sat on the same jetty where Biba and Cosimo had almost made love. She told Reggie about that night. He grinned widely. I knew something was up with you. But you didn't go through with it. She shook her head. No, my big dumb brain stopped it. And when I told Cosimo why, he kind of backed off. Not that he wasn't kind. Well now that's admirable. He did exactly the right thing. Except? Except what? Biba flushed again, at this rate she'd be scarlet all day. Tonight. Reggie looked surprised. You're ready? Biba nodded. I'm nervous, of course, but I really believe I can do this because I want to do it so badly. And I trust Cosimo, Reggie. You know how much of a big thing that is for me. I do, honey. Reggie hugged her. I'm really happy for you, Biebs. This is one of those moments. It is. They looked out over the lake in companionable silence for a few minutes, then Reggie tickled the back of her neck. Biebs, have you seen your mom and dad since we've been in Tacoma? She shook her head. No. The base is less than a mile away. I know. She turned to look at him. I have no feeling for them, Reg. 
No love, no hate, just nothing. They lost the right to call me daughter when they didn't believe me. Biba looked away again. The bastard was later arrested for doing the same thing to three more children. Did you know that? Reggie shook his head, his eyes serious. I didn't. My parents never called to apologize. Not once. They would have known about the arrest, too. So, Reg, that tells me everything I need to know. End of subject. Fair enough. Reggie kissed her cheek. Love you, Bugs. Love you, too. She drew in a shaky breath. Gosh, why am I so nervous? Because Cosimo means something to you, Reggie said fervently. That's good. That's perfect. Don't worry, take it easy. Relax, boo. This is a movie set. Makeup has a drawer full. Biba grimaced. I wish I didn't know that. Reggie got up and pulled her to her feet. Come on. Knowing Stella, she's looking for you. I'll get some rubbers for you. Have a great night. Stella was in a very bad mood, despite the fact they weren't working that day. Look at all this mail, she moaned, heaving a stack onto the table. I thought you were going to keep on top of it. I do my best, Stella. You could have thinned this out yesterday. Biba gritted her teeth. I don't work Saturdays, you know that. Stella, having lit a cigarette, picked a bit of tobacco off of her tongue. Maybe I should get an assistant who doesn't need days off. Good luck with that. Why are you in such a nasty mode? As if Biba didn't know. Stella had obviously seen her come back from the day out with Cosimo and Nico. Stella didn't answer her question. She nodded at the mail. Get to it then, I don't have all day. Actually, you do. But Biba said nothing, instead swiftly sorting the mail into three piles, fan, work, junk. Stella scooped up the junk and threw it in the trash can. Biba retrieved it with a glare and put it in the recycling bin. Many battles were what their relationship was based on. Stella started to look through the work pile. Wow. The Weinstein Company, no thanks. She dumped that one in the trash with a flourish. Biba nodded. That was something they could agree on. She looked through the fan mail, weeding out anything that needed a reply or a signed autograph. The final envelope she chose was a heavy manila one. As she shook out the contents, she saw they were just photos, no note. She picked a few up, noting they were sticky with something. Gross. But then she noticed it had a red color and a sweet smell. Corn syrup. The stuff they use for blood on movie sets. Yikes. She looked through the photos, a knees curling through her stomach. Mostly they were pictures of Stella on set or walking back to the manor. Taken on a phone, obviously. Then there were the five other photos. Cosimo, Rich, Reggie, Gunter and herself. These were the ones with the fake blood on. They were being threatened. What is that? Stella reached for it, but Biba pushed her hand away. Don't touch. We need to get these to the FBI. She looked up and saw the fear in Stella's eyes. Is it him? I think so. So, the less we handle them, the better. Should we call Cosimo? Biba shook her head. I'll go talk to Rich and Gunter, they'll know what to do. Cosimo is hiking Mount Rainier with his son today. Stella sat back, her hands clenching and unclenching. Is he threatening me? Not you. I think whoever he is, he thinks he's in love with you. This message is really for the rest of us, we get in the way and were. She drew an imaginary knife across her throat, and Stella blanched. This is actually serious, right? If he's threatening to kill my friends. Biba didn't show how touched she was by that statement, mostly because she wasn't sure Stella meant it. Nothing's going to happen, Stell, I promise. I know Kung Fu. You do. No, Biba grinned at her boss, trying to make her laugh. But I'm scrappy. She got up to find a plastic bag to put the envelope in. Stella didn't smile. If anyone got hurt because of me. Biba sat down opposite her boss. First of all, in the unlikely event any of us got hurt, it would be because of him, the crazy, not you. 
This is not your responsibility. Yes, but you are. Biba had to look away then, because tears did fill her eyes. Her damn parents had never said that to her, and now her diva boss Stella was saying it. How messed up was that? Don't worry about it, Stella, really. We'll get to the bottom of this. She went to find Rich and Gunter, and they called in Lars and Channing, Cosimo's seconds in command, and they agreed with Biba. No one else was to touch the letter, and they'd call in the FBI the next day to come collect it. Rich and Gunter made plans to beef up security. You better tell Reggie to watch out too, Rich said to Biba as they walked back to the trailers. If he's in the nutjob's sights. I will. Biba went to find her best friend and met him in the lobby of the manor. Here, he said, and stuffed her pockets with rubbers. Biba colored immediately. Thank you. Listen, Reg, come sit with me. I have something to tell you. Chapter 12 Nico stood at the junction of the trail. Which way? Cosimo, only a little way behind his son, nodded towards the Emmons Moraine Trail. If we go that way, we'll get to see the Emmons Glacier. Largest in the contiguous states. Cool. Cosimo didn't mind this one-word appraisal now. He'd learned as they hiked alongside the White River for the last hour or so, that Nico was merely economical with his words. When Cosimo asked him about something he cared about, however, his son was erudite and knowledgeable and passionate. As they walked now, he looked at his son. So, I guess movie-making and bathymetry don't have a lot of crossover that we can bond about. Nico shrugged. I don't know, documentaries are cool. Who's your favorite? Werner Herzog or the Maisels? Did you ever see Grizzly Man? Cosimo nodded. That one kept me up at night. I know, right? The part where he tells the mother never to let anyone else hear Timothy Treadwell's screams. Holy cow. Nico shook his head. But I kind of loved Treadwell for his optimism. His love for the bears outweighed his sense of risk. Backfired, of course, but it was there. Nick, are you really only 16? Cosimo shook his head, grinning, and Nico laughed. Guess I'm just passionate about what I love, too, like my old man. Cosimo smiled at him. Maybe one day, we could make a documentary together. Nico nodded. I'd like that. They walked on a little further until they reached the glacier. Whoa. Nico said, blowing out his cheeks. It's something all right. Cosimo gazed out over the vista, and the two men enjoyed the view in silence for a few minutes. Want to double back, do the rest of the Great Basin? Sure thing. They went back down the spur and onto the main pathway. So, Nico said, and Cosimo detected a note of curiosity in his tone. Biba. Yes? Nico grinned at his father. You like her. Didn't you? Dude, have you seen her? Of course I liked her, but not in that way. She's so cool. I mean you like like her. Cosimo didn't know where this was heading, so he didn't answer. Nico play punched his shoulder. Dad, seriously, you should go for it. I could see you two were into each other. Reggie thinks so too. It's that obvious? Yup. Nico bent down to study a plant at the side of the path. Huh. Anyway, yes. You and Biba. Cosimo considered. You know there's 19 years age difference? So? Who gives a shit? You were what, seven years older than mom? It's just numbers. What counts is the chemistry. Geez, you are an old man inside. Nico grinned. About some things. I still love fart gags. Who doesn't? I know, right? Apparently, that's immature to some people. Killjoys. Cosimo chuckled. Nick, can we talk about your mom? Nico stopped, a look of pain crossing his face. It's not that I want to forget she ever existed, Dad. It's just I'm not ready to talk about her. I feel like I let her down. I can tell you that you didn't, until I'm blue in the face, but until you believe it. Cosimo nodded. Just know, whenever you're ready, I'm here. 
On the car ride back, Nico was quieter, but when Cosimo dropped him off at the bus station, Nico hugged him fiercely. Thanks, Dad. I mean it. No problem. Love you, bud. Love you too, Dad. I'll call you in a couple of days. Cool. Cosimo said and grinned at his son. Nico laughed and rolled his eyes. Go get some pa, he shot back as he climbed the steps of the bus, and Cosimo laughed. As he watched Nico's bus pull away, Cosimo suddenly felt nervous. He and Biba had not planned what they would do this evening, where to meet, where to. Gosh, his whole body was on fire, thinking about making love to her. Cosimo drove back slowly to Lakewood, trying to steady his nerves. Bebo would need him to be confident tonight, the weight of responsibility bore down on him, but he was determined they go on this journey together. He was crazy about her, heck screw that, he was in love with her, had been practically since he met her. The mad chemistry between them made this inevitable. He parked his car and was deep in thought as he walked slowly to the manor. In his room, he saw a note pushed under his door. He smiled when he saw the single word written on it in Biba's sprawling cursive. Tonight. Gosh, yes. He grabbed a quick shower, then took out his phone and called her. Hey. Hey, you. Her voice was soft. Are you back? I am. Where are you? Dealing with a reckless meltdown. Nothing serious, thankfully. Did you and Nico have a great time? Cosimo grinned. Darling, why are we talking on the phone when we could be talking in person? Have you eaten? Not yet. Well, I have a suggestion. Date night. Let's have dinner, watch a movie. A proper date. If you're anything like me, you're nervous as hell. Biba gave a relieved laugh. Or dude. She hesitated. Shall I come to your suite? I could come get you. She laughed. I think I know the way. When? I don't see any reason to postpone any longer, do you? His voice was gruff with emotion, and he heard her intake of breath. No. No, I don't. I'll see you in a minute. I can't wait. Luckily, he thought, housekeeping had been there, there were fresh sheets on the bed and the room was tidy. He lit some of the scented candles in the room and dimmed the lights. He felt like a teenager on prom night. At her knock, he opened the door and smiled at her. Bebo was wearing a midnight blue smock dress, which clung to her curves, but was comfortable enough to lounge around in. You're beautiful, he said and drew her into the room. He could feel her trembling as he slid his arms around her waist. Cosimo stroked her face. How are you? Biba chuckled a little shakily. Terrified, actually. Cosimo bent his head down to kiss her mouth. So sweet. Me too. We can take things slowly, baby. Shall we order some food and get relaxed? She nodded and taking her hand, he led her to the couch, handing her a menu. I love you. Cosimo hadn't known he would say it until right then, and the change in the room was immediate. I'm so in love with you, Biba May. You have brought me back to life, and I want to spend every waking moment with you, and every unwaking moment. I just want to be with you. Thank you for trusting me to do this with you. He stroked her body. How do you feel? Really? My body feels kind of like jelly, Biba laughed, like all my limbs are liquefied, it's a lovely feeling. Cosimo grinned. I feel it too. Nothing could ruin the romance of this for me, he heard her say and then laugh. What? He went back into the bedroom and saw her grinning at him. Biba giggled. I said that, and then my stomach gave the biggest rumble. Then let's order some food. We have all night to do whatever we want. Over a dinner of flame-grilled steaks and a fresh green salad, followed by a fresh fruit salad, he told her about his day with Nico. Biba, we would have never gotten this far without what you did for us yesterday. And you should know, you've enchanted not just DeLuca Sr. Nico adores you. Cosimo leaned over to kiss her. He told me to go for it. He's a very intelligent, very wise young man, Biba said with a smile. I'm glad you took his advice. 
So you think it's a beginning or more? I'm going to go with a beginning. He's not ready to accept it wasn't his fault his mom died and he wasn't there. But it's a start, some building blocks in our relationship. I was despairing I'd lost him until you. Biba put down her fork and went into his arms, perching on his lap. We're good for each other, Cosimo de Luca. He gazed up at her with those magnetic green eyes, and Biba felt her belly quiver with desire. He was so beautiful, her lover. She could hardly believe it. Cosimo de Luca was her lover, and he truly loved her. Not just lust, but actual grown up proper love. She leaned her forehead against his. Cosimo. Yes, my love? She grinned. Take me to bed and make me yours all night. And with a grin, he did just that. Soon. They were distracted by the photos by their director sleeping with Biba. Good. It would save anyone else from being hurt when he took Stella away from them. And he knew exactly when to do it. Stella would be his by this time next week, and all his planning would have been worth it. He could hardly wait. Chapter 13 Biba drifted back into consciousness, feeling Cosimo's lips trailing up her spine. She smiled and opened her eyes as he reached her lips. Good morning, gorgeous. Oh no fair, you brushed your teeth. Cosimo chuckled. You taste heavenly. Biba rolled onto her back, and Cosimo immediately blew a raspberry on her stomach, making her giggle. Silly boy. She combed her fingers through his messy dark curls, not really believing she was here in his bed, wrapped in his arms. Cuz. Is this really happening? Cosimo looked up, smiling. It really is. It is happening. We are happening. I love you, Biba May. As I love you, Cosimo de Luca. She hesitated. Should we keep this quiet? Hmm. Cosimo propped himself up on his elbow next to her. I've been wondering the same thing. There are pros and cons to both sides, but I think we could plow some middle path. Don't announce it, but don't deny it. I want to hold your hand, whether I'm in public or private. Stella's going to be mad. That's her problem. If she gets nasty, remember, the studio pays your salary. You won't be fired either way. Thank you. It's weird, but I don't feel guilty about this. I fell in love with you, Stella just wanted you for a conquest. Cosimo made a face. Yep, and if she'd done her homework, she'd know I don't roll that way. I've never been a playboy, regardless of what people might think. I'm not saying I was a saint. Biba grinned at him. I should hope not. Have you seen you? What a waste if you were a monk. Cosimo laughed. You're very kind. He brushed her lips with his. You want some breakfast? I want some Cosimo. Dressing, Biba gave a rueful grin. I should have thought ahead and brought fresh underwear. I'll have to commando it back to my room. She finally made it back to her room to find a message from Stella on her phone. Where the hell are you? It's Monday, Biba. Time to work. Madam Snark. But Stella couldn't ruin Biba's happiness, and when Cosimo held her hand as they walked downstairs and out to the craft service trailer for breakfast, she didn't care who saw them or what they thought. There was a twinge of guilt when she saw Rich check out their linked hands, but he winked and smiled and her unease lifted. To their credit, no one made a big deal of Cosimo and Biba's obvious togetherness, and when they began work, they all switched back into their professional roles. Biba went to find Stella. Hey, Stell. She waited for the spitefulness to begin, but Stella was subdued. You okay, Stella? Stella nodded, then shook her head. No, not really. She looked so genuinely depressed that Biba sat down with her, taking her hand. What is it? Stella handed her the iPhone she used for personal business only. Look. Biba opened the text message. My love, soon we will be together, and the whole world will just melt away. You and I will be at peace, I promise you, it won't hurt for long, and then we'll be together for eternity. I love you. I want you. This is our fate, our destiny. 
don't fight this please. You have no idea what I'm capable of if anyone tries to get in our way. Yours, forever XXX. Jeez. Biba felt sick, and Stella nodded. He's going to kill me. What else could he mean? Biba wanted to reassure her, but she knew it wasn't possible. The stalker's meaning was clear. She looked up and saw a tear escape Stella's eye. I'm scared, Biebs. Biba wrapped her arms around her boss and held her as she sobbed out all her fear. Stella was never this vulnerable in front of her, ever. She must be terrified, Biba thought. She leaned her cheek against Stella's blonde head. We'll contact the FBI again, Stell. Cuz won't let anything happen to you, I swear. Stella sniffed and sat up. She gave Biba a strange smile. Cuz is it now? Biba nodded. She held Stella's gaze and finally Stella nodded. Oh. I see. I'm sorry, Stella. It just happened. Stella shrugged. Don't apologize. You wanted him, you got him. All's fair and all that. She pulled at her bottom lip in thought. I'd been thinking anyway that I might just take a break from men, from relationships. You should. You have so much more to offer than just randoms. You deserve more. Biba flushed at her outburst. Would it sound like she was just relieved Stella wouldn't go after Cosimo? But Stella just nodded. You're right. Look, my eyes are disgustingly puffy now. Cold spoons and some cream, they'll be fine. You're not scheduled until this afternoon anyway. Stella was watching her. I'm sorry about all the times I treated you badly, Biba. Like that message this morning. I was just in a bait. Biba grinned. I'm used to it. Stella laughed a little. I didn't used to be like this, you know. Before I was sweet. She sighed. But in this business, the things you see, the things you're forced to do, it's such a relief to be on this film set, you know? Working with the director of Cosimo's talent, his kindness, his protection. You must feel that. I do. I'm sorry again about Damon. Not your fault, Stell. Look, let's have a chill out for a half hour, get you relaxed, and then we'll tackle this, she held up the iPhone, together. We'll call the FBI and get to the bottom of this. Special Agent Luke Harris arrived just after lunch, and he gathered Cosimo, Lars, Channing, Rich and Gunter, Stella and Biba and Reg into the manor's large drawing room. Reggie nudged Biba. Is Poirot going to tell us which one of us is a wrong un? Biba had to hide her snort of laughter as a cough. Luke Harris took the photos on Stella's iPhone into evidence. We'll process these as soon as possible. We'll need your fingerprints, Ms. May and Ms. Reckless, for comparison. No problem. Cosimo shifted irritably. So, there's been no progress on the case? Luke Harris shook his head. Whoever this is knows what he's doing. Ms. Reckless, we need to have a long conversation about your personal life, I'm afraid. Stella grimaced. It's all on Wikipedia. Can't you look it up? I'm afraid not. And I think you should know, Mr. Trassus got good lawyers. He got the attempted assault charge dropped. What? Cosimo was outraged as Biba went pale. What the hell? Why weren't we informed before? Harris shook his head. I don't know, I'm sorry. Wherever Tracy fled to, he's well hidden. This could be him. Cosimo shot a worried glance towards Biba. Harris nodded. Believe me, we have him on our suspect list. The only thing that prevents me from making him our number one suspect is that his motive would likely be revenge, not obsession, and I would think he would target Ms. May rather than Ms. Reckless. To shut her up, so to speak. Geez, Reggie hissed, his hand on Biba's shoulder, and even Harris looked apologetic. Sorry, he said to Biba, that came out wrong. But I stand by my argument. I don't think this is him, which isn't to say you shouldn't be vigilant. This set is rapidly turning into a prison, Lars murmured to Cosimo. Cosimo's face was strained. Look, Agent Harris, we need to communicate better. Rich and Gunner are leading a strong team now, but you've seen this place. The woods around the lake, the openness of the manor itself, an army couldn't protect every inch. 
if someone gets in, I don't even want to think about what could happen. Everyone in the room felt a chill creep down their spine, and when Biba looked in Cosimo's eyes, all she could see was fear. Chapter 14 Agent Harris left after a little while, without making any real assurances. Lars, Cosimo, and Channing went into a huddle, and the others drifted away. Biba had her arm around a quiet Stella as they made their way back to set. You all right? Stella shook her head but didn't say anything. She leaned against Biba, and Biba knew she needed comfort more than anything else. Come on, Stell. We'll go grab some hot chocolate and play some cards. Stella shook her head. I'm grateful, Biba, but I think I'd rather be alone for a while. Biba watched her walk back to her trailer. Reggie massaged the back of his neck. And here I thought this was going to be a relaxed, happy set. Biba didn't smile. There was no doubt that this whole stalker thing cast a gloom over everyone. Both Rich and Gunter's demeanors, which were usually so fun-loving, were now quite cowed and defeated. A few days later, Reggie came to find her. Pooks, I've got bad news. More? Biba was tired and stressed out worrying for Stella. My mom's sick. I'm going to have to go up to see her on the weekend, instead of spending your birthday with you. Biba hugged him. That's no problem, boo, you have to be with Mary. What's up with her? A virus, I think. She went up to the cabin in the mountains to paint and caught a cold that she can't shake. Oh, poor thing. Do you want me to come with you? Biba had known Mary for years. Ever since Reggie and she had become friends, Mary had been a pseudo-mother to her, kind, comforting, and fun-loving like her son. Mary had always hoped that Reggie and Biba would get together, but somehow, they'd gone from new acquaintances to best friends without ever going through the could we be more. Stage. Reggie smiled at her. No, it's okay. But she might appreciate a call if you have time. Biba was already pulling her phone out of her pocket and dialing, Mary Moo, you have the flu? She put it on speaker so Reggie could listen too. Mary Quinn chuckled, her voice hoarse and croaky. Biba, how lovely to hear from you, darling. Yes, I'm afraid so. Damn thing won't shift. Reggie's insisting on coming to see me. And so he should. Shall I come too? Oh no, dear. It's your birthday, and I don't want to risk infecting both of you. Besides, Reggie tells me you have a new man in your life. Biba grinned, her body relaxing at the mention of Cosimo. You would love him, Moo, truly. He's a handsome chap. I googled him when Reggie told me who he was working for. Yes, a very pretty boy. Those eyes. Lucky girl. I am that, Biba said. Are you sure there's nothing I can get for you? No, darling, Reggie's been more than kind. Maybe next year, we can all spend your birthday together. I would love that. Feel better soon, Moo. Love you. I love you too, sweet girl. Biba ended the call and smiled at Reggie. If I haven't already said a million times, you are so lucky to have a mother like her. I think so too. Reggie chewed his lip. I do worry about her being in the mountains. Cinnamon Lodge is fine in the summer, but at this time of year, it gets below freezing up there, and if she's already sick. She has heating, right? And the place is like a palace. Reggie and his mother weren't exactly poor. Reggie's father had made his fortune in textiles, and Reggie had never wanted for anything. Biba knew he worried about his mom being alone, but Mary Quinn was nothing if not independent. Well, if she won't let me visit, I'm at least going to send her a care package. You think you could bring it to her for me? Reggie smiled at her. You're the sweetest and of course. Biba swung by that afternoon to go to a well-known Tacoma candy store. She spent a pleasurable hour choosing from the handmade chocolates, knowing Mary had a sweet tooth, then drove to the Tacoma Mall to find other little gifts for her de facto mom. It wasn't until she left one store with a comfortable woolen blanket for Mary that Biba realized she was being followed. It started with a sick feeling inside as she felt someone walking too close behind her. 
She darted into the nearest store and circled back on herself to see if she could spot who it was. No one. Was she being paranoid? Biba took a deep breath in and went out into the mall again. Ten minutes later, she got that same prickling up her spine and turned around. She was being paranoid. No one was paying any attention to her. Shaking her head, she went to grab a coffee and saw a rich furlough in the back of the shop, latte on the table in front of him, flicking through something on his phone. Biba hesitated for a moment. Would Rich have followed her? He looked up then, and if he was acting, he did a good impression of being surprised. Hey Shortstack, didn't expect to see you here. Can I get you a drink? Biba, not wanting to be rude, nodded. I'd like that. Hot chocolate, please. She settled down in the easy chair opposite Rich's, and then laughed when he returned with a fully loaded hot chocolate for her. I got them to put everything on, and I remembered you like a shot of vanilla syrup, too. Biba relaxed. Rich was the last person she needed to be scared of. Thank you, honey. She looked at the cream piled high on top of the liquid. How on earth do I tackle this? I suggest repelling up the north face, Rich nodded sagely. Biba giggled. You are a lunatic. She took a sip, burying her nose in the cream, then giving him a wide grin. Rich laughed, shaking his head. Damn, May, stop being so adorable. Biba felt slightly awkward. Sorry. Dork. Adorkable. Her shoulders eased. That isn't a word. Is. So. So. Elephant in the room. You and cuz, happy. She nodded firmly. Very. I'm really sore. Don't you dare say you're sorry, Biebs. I'm delighted for you, I really am. You and cuz make sense. Even with the age gap? Shoo the age gap. Literally, ha ha. He grinned and she couldn't help but laugh. What about you? Rich shrugged. As everyone says, I have my life partner in Gunter, the goofball. He grinned. If only I was like Reggie. Ha. Huh. Gay. Then me and Gun could have a happy life together. Biba sipped her hot chocolate. Reggie's not gay, Rich. Really? Rich seemed genuinely taken aback, and Biba shook her head. Nope. Dang it. Now I owe Gun 20 bucks. Biba laughed. Oh, so you were fishing? Rich grinned. Sorry. Just neither of us could figure out why you and Reggie never got together. There are some men who can resist me, she said, rolling her eyes. Most men, actually. Ha. Huh. No chance. She blew a raspberry embarrassed at his compliment, and Rich laughed. He really was the sweetest guy. What about Stella, Rich? She's single at the moment. Rich raised both his hands. Whoa. Too much woman for you? Too much drama for me. Nah, I'll just wait until they perfect cloning and borrow some of your DNA. Shucks. You know I snore like a walrus, right? Stop. And I drool. Constantly. I look like the swamp creature in the mornings. Don't believe you. Biba grinned wickedly and I fart. A lot. Ask Stella. I'm always laying an air biscuit for her to find. Rich was laughing so hard now his eyes were watering. Stop. OWW, oh, now I have a cramp. Biba laughed at him as he calmed himself down. Gosh, it feels good to laugh after that crapla meeting the other day. Right? That FBI agent is a tool. Biba nodded. This whole thing is making me paranoid. Before I came in here, I could have sworn someone was following me. I even ducked into a couple of stores and double-backed. Didn't see anyone, but I was spooked for a time. Rich's smile had disappeared. What the hell? Why didn't you lead with that? He pushed back his chair, and Biba got up in alarm. What are you doing? He took her hand. Come on. I'm friendly with the security team here. We're going to check out the mall security cameras. Chapter 15
Cosimo was waiting for them when Rich drove her back to the set. Bebo went into his arms, and he could feel her trembling. Rich was stone-faced. He nodded at Cosimo. Someone followed Biba. A man, we think, but he or she was hooded. Cosimo felt sick. Anything could have happened to Biba. Did he have a weapon? He heard Biba, whose face was buried in his sweater, give a distressed squeak. It's okay, baby, you're safe, he said, burying his face in her hair, breathing her in. We couldn't tell. Thinking dispassionately about this, and that's not easy, but he would have nothing to gain by hurting Biba. I think it was just designed to either gather information or to spook us. Both, maybe? Cosimo cursed. Okay, from now, no one goes out alone. I don't want to run your lives, but while you work for me, all of you, you will be protected. Go in twos or take a security guard with you. That includes you and Gunrich. I don't think this guy is messing around. I agree. Rich put his hand on Biba's shoulder. Biebs, I promise. You're safe. Cosimo tilted Biba's chin up so she could see his face. He tried to smile. What he said. Rich left them alone, and Cosimo took Biba back to his suite. He couldn't wait before taking her in his arms and kissing her. God help me, if anyone ever hurts you. It's not me he's after, cuz. Let's just focus on that. Although poor Stella. I cannot imagine how she must feel at the moment. I know. She was quiet again today. I think Franco and Sifrido were going to take her to dinner and try to make her feel better. Good guys. Cosimo smiled. They are. He cupped her face in his hand. Thank God you're okay. I am now. She leaned into his big body. He scooped her into his arms and sat down in the easy chair, with her cradled against him. Biba pressed her lips against his neck. I'm scared for Stella. I know, honey. He kissed her. But for tonight, she's okay. She's safe. And? He suddenly smiled, it's your birthday tomorrow. 22. Old lady. Biba laughed. Take this old lady to bed, boy. The next morning, Biba opened her eyes and started to laugh immediately. Next to her, Cosimo lay, naked and glorious, wearing a glitter-covered paper hat with a party horn in his mouth. He blew into it, and the curled paper tongue rolled out and bopped her on the nose. Biba giggled. You lunatic. Cosimo took the party favor from his mouth and leaned in to kiss her. Happy birthday, Snooks. Snooks? New nickname. Biba considered. I'll allow it. Cosimo grinned. So, Miss May, I have plans for you today, but only if they sound good to you. Hit me. Breakfast in bed, all your favorites. Then a long soak in the tub, with me, of course. The crew and cast have organized a special lunch for you. That's sweet, and I love how much of this day revolves around food. And lovemaking. Don't forget that. How could I? She giggled as he wrapped his arms around her and kissed her neck. After lunch. After lunch, we get some alone time. We're going to Gig Harbor, and we're going on a gondolier. If I can't take you to Venice yet, then I'm bringing Venice to you. Biba looked excited. That's so romantic, babe. Gosh, how lovely. Cosimo grinned, obviously pleased. Afterwards, a romantic dinner for two in the city, then back here for a little surprise out on the lake. You really have organized this, Biba said, touched beyond belief. This man truly loved her. Cosimo covered her body with his, grinning down at her. I'll admit, Reggie helped me out some. I'm sorry he won't be here to help us celebrate. Me too. I'm sure he wishes he was too, but his mom means a lot to both of us. Snooks? Yeah. Cosimo meant it when he said breakfast with all of her favorites. Granola scrambled eggs, pancakes, French toast, and fresh fruit. Biba had a good-sized portion of every item, much to Cosimo's amusement. Listen man, I need the energy, Biba said, chomping half a pancake in one go. She giggled as Cosimo tried to tickle her. Don't eat too much, I don't need you throwing up on me later on. Ha ha. 
but she put down the rest of her pancake and climbed onto his lap. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful birthday. It's not even begun yet, he said with a smile, and kissed her with such passion that they forgot all about the food and tumbled to the carpet. Stella deleted the email and sat back, pissed. She'd lost out on another role to Jennifer Lawrence, and now she was fuming. Yes, she was J-Law's senior by ten years, but the character they had been up for was in her late thirties, like Stella. What was worse was that they shared an agent which meant Dan Flint was pushing Jennifer more than he was Stella, probably because they'd pay more for Jen and his cut would be bigger. Stella was old enough and smart enough to know that made sense, but where was his sense of loyalty? Stella had made him a millionaire several times over, and, more importantly, a power player in Hollywood. Stella tapped out another cigarette. It killed her appetite, but lately she had begun to wonder if the constant starvation and working out was worth it for the roles she was getting. Except this one, of course. She had planned on this movie being the one which kick-started her career again. She might be the biggest movie star on the planet, but when you were at the top, there was only one way to go down. She scrubbed at her face with her hands. Gosh, she was only 36, but she felt a decade older. Maybe it was from being with someone as young as Biba all the time. Stella wasn't someone who had female friends, and her own mother was estranged from her. The older Reckless had written a tell-all about her daughter five years previously, which nearly torpedoed Stella's career with its revelations of teen pregnancy and abortions. Biba was the closest person to Stella, not that Stella would admit that. Which is why, honestly, when Stella needed to lash out, Biba bore the brunt. Stella's biggest fear in life was being too close to someone, and then losing them. It stemmed from her losing her beloved pa when she was eight, suddenly in a fiery car wreck. She had been pulled from the car at the last moment and had heard his screams as he died. They stayed with her. So, when she found herself softening towards her long-term assistant, she drew back and got extra mean with Biba. Now, as she stepped from her trailer and walked back to the manor, she saw Biba and Cosimo hand in hand, so obviously joyful in their love for each other. Stella again felt the jolt, just as she had when she first realized Cosimo and Bebo were falling for each other. It hurt. She hated to admit it, but it hurt like hell that she had been passed over for Biba. And then there was Biba's wild, untamed beauty. Stella wished she had the natural freshness Biba had, the utter lack of reliance on makeup, instead harnessing all the vitality of youthful spirit. Stella wished she didn't care as much over her own appearance, she knew she was beautiful but in an ice queen way, not the soft, sensual, breath of fresh air way that Biba inhabited. She ignored Biba and Cosimo as they made their way to see the other members of cast and crew. Franco kissed Biba's cheek and Sifrido twirled her in his arms. Geez. Stella's lip curled up in a sneer. When Biba came over to her, Stella turned cold eyes on her. Aren't we the center of attention? She pushed the guilt aside when she saw Biba's face fall a little. Biba quickly picked herself up, though. And good morning to you, too. I was going to see if you wanted to join Cuz and I and some of the others for lunch. No thanks. Biba stared at her, and her eyes turned cold. Fine. She stalked off, and Stella sighed. What was the point of that? It was Biba's birthday for Christ's sakes, why shouldn't she be fated and celebrated? Gosh, I'm turning into such an old movie star spiteful cliché. She turned to call out after Biba, to wish her a happy birthday, but Biba was already halfway across the site, her arm around Cosimo's waist. Shit. I'm sorry, Biba. But I can't show how much you mean to me. If I do, I'll lose all the power in our relationship. Stella grabbed some black coffee and went to work. Chapter 16 They filmed until lunchtime. Rich and Gunter had set up a barbecue in the grounds, greasy, smoky, saucy. Biba loved it. She felt a little overwhelmed by all the attention and wasn't quite sure how to process the affection these people had for her. She took a moment alone to decompress and called Reggie. Hey, birthday girl. Biba relaxed. Hey, boo. How's your mom? She's okay, a bit sniffy and making loud sounds. I heard that, 
came a voice in the background, and both Biba and Reggie laughed. Mom says happy birthday too, and thank for the care package. Geez, so much sugar, Biebs. Are you trying to make my mom diabetic? There's 15 packs of red vines. Biba grinned. She likes them. Good grief. Are you being spoiled today? So much, cuz told me you organized most of it, so thank you. Nah, it was teamwork. Enjoy it, boo. Biba chuckled, but Reggie must have picked up on something in her tone. What is it, Biebs? Biba swallowed a lump in her throat. I've just, it's like having a family again. Reggie's voice softened. We love you, silly girl. Of course we're your family. Listen, I've got a gift for you, but I don't think I'll be home tomorrow. Probably Tuesday or something. Dude, don't worry about it. I miss you, but your mom is more important. Tell her I love her, won't you? I will. Happy birthday, darling. Cosimo had another surprise in store for her. They were going to Gig Harbor by helicopter. As they flew over Ruston and Shore Acres, Biba kissed Cosimo. You are the best gift any woman could have. Cosimo grinned. Ha! Tell me again on our 50th wedding anniversary when I'm 90 and you're still sprightly and active. You'll trade me in for a younger model. Well, of course, Biba tried to keep a straight face. But I think you overestimate how long I'll wait to take a younger lover. Cosimo grinned. Oh, really? Damn, I was banking on at least 50 years. They both laughed, and Cosimo locked his fingers with hers. Gosh, you make me happy, Biba May. Right back at you, handsome. Cosimo beamed, then nodded out of the helicopter's window. We're here. They both agreed that the gondolier ride was incredibly romantic, but over dinner in one of the most exclusive restaurants in the city, Cosimo expressed his true love for his hometown of Venice. It is the most incredible place to grow up. We used to take Nico every summer. Grace and I always followed the rule of when one works, the other doesn't. But in the summer, we always managed a month together in Venice. When Nico grew up, of course, he wanted to spend summers with his friends, so the trips back home trailed off. Did your own mother never live there? Only when I was young. Biba studied him. You never mention your dad. Cosimo sipped his wine and shrugged. Because I never knew him. Mom got pregnant by a married man, she didn't know he was married, and decided to raise me on her own. We even lived in a women-led commune for a time in France before we came here. And she's American? Cosimo nodded. Washingtonian born and bred. I can't wait to meet her. Cosimo kissed her hand. She will adore you, Biba. When they got back to Lakewood, Biba saw that the little beach next to the lake was lit up with tiki torches, and a thrill ran through her. What have you mad people done now? Cosimo laughed. Wait and see. Their friends and colleagues greeted them, and she saw Rich nod to Cosimo with a grin. Now. Now, agreed Cosimo, and he took Biba's hand, smiling down at her. Happy birthday, baby. Biba nearly jumped out of her skin as fireworks began streaking through the night sky and exploding in a riot of colors above them. She laughed and shook her head. You did all this for me? Cosimo kissed her tenderly. You are so loved, Biba, not just by me. By Reggie, by Rich, by the rest of them, even Stella loves you. Ha. She does. She just likes to hide it. He looked around for the blonde actress, but Stella was nowhere to be seen. Hey, Rich, someone being a diva still? Rich slung his arm around Biba's shoulders. Stella's been sulking all afternoon, hiding out in her trailer. Want me to go find her? Biba shook her head, but Cosimo rolled his eyes. Yes, go find her. Tell her to stop being a mean girl and come out to play. Rich chuckled. Will do. Biba sighed. Cause this day has been magical, just magical. Thank you, baby. Cosimo's cell phone rang, and he grinned as he saw who was calling. I think this is for you, Biebs. He handed her his phone and Biba said, Hello? Happy birthday. Nico sang it down the phone, and Biba laughed. Hey Nick, thank you so much for calling. 
your dad has been spoiling me all day. He said he was going to, how was the gondolier? Biba laughed. Amazing. But you've done the real thing, huh? Not for a while. Maybe we could all go to Venice in the summer, oh, hey, grandma wants to say hi. Biba's heart beat a little faster as a gentle voice said hello. Hello, Mrs. DeLuca. It's wonderful to meet or speak to you. Olivia DeLuca laughed. It's Olivia, and I've heard so many good things about you. Happy birthday, dear. Thank you so much. Biba's nerves soon dissolved as she chatted with Cosimo's mother for a few minutes, then Nico came back on the phone. Yeah, like I was saying, maybe we could all go to Venice in the summer. It's a cool place, lots of stuff I can show you. Sounds good to me, Nick. Do you want to speak to your dad? Yeah, please. Happy birthday again, Biebs. See you soon. As she handed Cosimo's phone back to him, Biba felt like her entire being was buzzing with joy. She felt like she had a family now, Cosimo's son and mother accepting her so readily. She felt tears pop into her eyes, and as Cosimo ended his call, he swept his finger along her cheekbone, capturing the water. Happy tears, she said, I promise. I can't believe this is all happening, cuz. I love you so much. Cosimo took her into his arms. You have changed my world, Biba, from a place of darkness to one of light. I love you. Biba couldn't see how she could ever be unhappy again, but within the hour, they would all be shown that sometimes worlds can shatter in the blink of an eye. Chapter 17 As they walked hand in hand back toward the manor, Biba looked over to the trailers. She could see a faint light coming from the largest, and she knew Stella was sulking in her trailer. She nudged Cosimo. I'm going to go make peace with Stella, she said. I feel bad about our argument. Cosimo sighed. Baby, Stella needs to grow up some and realize not everything is about her. I know, but I feel bad. Cosimo stopped. Want me to come? Biba kissed him. I think you being there might make matters worse. I knew she wasn't okay with us. I think that's what her tantrum was about, really. She'll have to get used to it. Cosimo leaned his forehead against hers. I love you. Biba smiled. I love you too, Cosimo de Luca. Thank you for a perfect birthday. Don't be too long. I promise. The rain had begun to pour down now, and Biba walked quickly toward the trailers and made her way through the maze of them to Stella's. As she turned towards it, she almost fell over a prone figure on the ground. Hey. In the dim light, she saw it was Rich. Man, how much did you have to drink, Richie boy? He was lying face down and didn't even groan when she poked him with her toe. Rich? She managed to hoist him over onto his back and gasped. The front of his t-shirt was covered in blood. Biba recoiled. Oh my gosh, help. Somebody help us. Rich? Rich, come on man, wake up. Then she heard Stella scream, and in horror, saw a dark figure wrestling a naked and screaming Stella out of her trailer. No. Biba launched herself at them, her body knocking the figure away from her boss. The rain made it slippery, and the attacker stumbled as Biba pounded on his back. Stella was frozen in horror. Stella. Run. Biba screamed it at her, as the attacker threw her off and reached for Stella. Biba wasn't about to let her boss be snatched, and she body-slammed the attacker. She heard shouts coming from the direction of the manor. Stella run. Cosimo's coming. The assailant grabbed her by the throat with one hand and slammed her back against the trailer. He drove his fist into her stomach twice, vicious blows, and Biba crumpled, the wind knocked out of her. She dragged in some air into her lungs, watching the attacker clutch a crawling Stella and drag her away. When Biba tried to rise and follow them, her legs would not work. She could hear Cosimo shouting her name. I'm here, but her voice wouldn't work either and now a wave of dizziness hit her. The pain from the blows wasn't dissipating at all, in fact it was getting worse. Biba managed to stagger up and lurch a couple of steps just as lights came on, and Cosimo burst onto the scene. Biba saw the horror in his eyes, and she pointed to Rich. 
Help him. But Cosimo was running towards her, screaming her name, and Biba looked down. Now she knew why his face looked so full of horror. The hilt of a knife protruded from her belly, her white dress turning red and pink. She looked up into Cosimo's distraught green eyes as her legs finally failed her, and he caught her as she fell. He stabbed me, she said incredulously and shook her head. He's taken Stella, cuz. He's taken Stella. The pain was growing worse, and black spots danced in her vision. I'm dying. We had no time, no time. I love you, she said, touching Cosimo's face, and then all was silent. Chapter 18 Two years previously, Cosimo de Luca sat by his dying wife's bedside and held her hand as she gently slipped away, another victim of cancer. He had thought it was the worst day of his life. It was nothing to the terror he felt now. Waiting and covered in the blood of his 22-year-old lover, having been told to stay behind in the waiting room. Both Biba and Rich had been rushed to the emergency room, the FBI and police were all over Lakewood and the hospital, and journalists were clamoring outside for the news. Rich was in bad, bad shape, multiple stab wounds to the chest. Gunter was inconsolable. But all Cosimo could think about was Biba, her wan face, the blood pumping from her wounds. He'd lain her on the wet ground and pressed down hard on the savage wounds in her belly, trying to keep her blood inside her. They had to pry him away from her when the first responders arrived. His Biba. His beautiful, spirited, fun-loving Biba was dying, and there was nothing he could do about it. The police had taken her and Rich's details and told them they would contact next of kin. Cosimo wondered if Biba's parents would care. He told the police to go find Reggie, he was the closest to a family she had, except for now Cosimo himself. Cosimo had called his mother, telling her what happened. Mom, I have to tell Nico, he cannot hear this on the news. Dad? Cosimo nearly broke down when he heard his son. Nico, Biba's hurt. There was an incident, Stella was abducted and Rich and Biba were hurt trying to stop him. There was a hushed silence, then Nico spoke, and his voice was gravelly with shock. Is she okay? No son, she's not. She was stabbed. They're operating on her now. I'll come down. Cosimo almost panicked. No. No, Nick, really? You don't want to be here, it's hell. Dad. The way Nico's voice trembled broke Cosimo's heart. I promise, I swear, if she gets worse, I'll call you straight away. I promise on my life, Nico. Another long pause. Okay. Tell her to fight, Pa. She can do it if anyone can. I know it. Thank you, buddy. She will fight, that's Biba's way. Love you, Daddy. Cosimo did break down then. Love you too, Nick. Please pray for her. He took himself away to sob in private, then returned to the waiting room to sag down onto the couch. Lars put his arm around Cosimo's shoulders. Keep hope, cuz. Keep hope. An hour later, they came to tell them that Rich was dead. Biba woke up hyperventilating and tried to sit up, only to be pushed back down by firm hands. Sweetheart, you can't sit up. Take sips of air, that's it, focus on my face. A man's face, covered in a surgical mask, loomed into her vision. It's okay, Biba, you're safe. You're okay. You're in the recovery room at Sacred Heart Medical Center. Another gentle hand was stroking her forehead. Another face, a nurse, smiled down at her. You've done well, Biba. We're just keeping an eye on you, you lost a lot of blood. Stabbed. She croaked from underneath an oxygen mask, and the woman nodded. I know, baby girl, I'm sorry. Stella. Biba saw them look at each other. We don't know about anything apart from you, Biba. We know your partner is waiting on some news. I'm just going to tell him about your surgery. Want to see him? As soon as you're stable, hun. Biba nodded, feeling so out of it she could barely concentrate. She wondered why she felt no pain, then remembered they would have given her morphine. But she was alive. Was Stella okay? What about Rich? How had the day gone from such joy to such horror? Biba closed her eyes, feeling helpless. 
What the hell was wrong with people? She slept, fitfully at first, but then she sunk into a deep restful slumber, waking to bright sunshine which hurt her eyes, and a familiar hand held hers. Snooks? His voice made her relax, his nickname made her smile. Cuz? Thank God, you're okay, baby. It's going to be okay. His green eyes were full of pain. She reached out and stroked his cheek. I'm okay. Stella. Cosimo seemed to struggle for a moment. He took her. The FBI and the police have instigated a manhunt. Gosh. Biba tried again to sit up again, and Cosimo helped her into position. Biba touched the heavy dressing on her abdomen. How bad is it? It could have been a lot worse. No major organs, but your artery was damaged. They've grafted it and seem confident you will recover quickly, but you'll need some more blood transfusions. Cosimo told her all of this, as if reciting what the doctors had told him gave him hope. Biba nodded. I honestly don't feel bad. A little pain. Cosimo put the clicker in her hand. Press this for the morphine. He let out a shaky breath. Gosh, Biba, when I saw you covered in blood, that knife sticking out of you, I thought I'd lost you. I'm still here. Biba reached out to tilt his chin up, make him look her in the eye. Rich? She saw the grief in his eyes and moaned, oh no, as Cosimo told her that Rich didn't make it. Not Rich, gosh, cuz. She began to weep, and he cradled her in his arms. As her sobs slowed to a whimper, a doctor came in to see them. Biba could see the woman studying her for signs of pain or distress. She wiped her eyes. I'm okay, doc, just a friend died. Mr. Furlow? I know. I'm so sorry for your loss. How are you feeling this morning, relatively speaking? Biba nodded. Actually, okay, more tired than anything. The doctor made her lie back while she undid Biba's dressings and examined her wounds. Biba saw the jagged incisions and stitches on her belly. Cosimo turned away, looking sickened and angry at the same time. The doctor inspected the wounds. We managed to repair the damage easily. No organ damage, which was the main concern. No signs of infection, which is good. The tiredness you're experiencing is because of the blood loss and trauma. You were a little anemic to start with, did you know that? Biba shook her head. I didn't. Well, we're going to keep you in for a couple of days, and then you can go home to recover. Biba was surprised. So quickly. You were very lucky. I'll check back with you later. Both Biba and Cosimo thanked her, then Cosimo returned to sit by her. You'll be staying in my hotel suite while you recover. Obviously, production has been shut down on the movie. We can't make it without Stella. Gosh, I hope she's okay. Cosimo shook his head. I just pray we find her before that psycho does something stupid. Stella wasn't nearly close to being okay. Her abductor had raged at her for making me hurt those people, making me kill that girl, as he had driven her away into the night, and she had cringed away from his terrifying wrath. At least he had tossed her a blanket to cover herself, and she wrapped it tightly around her body. It saved her modesty but didn't protect much from the biting cold. Where are you taking me? He didn't answer. He wore a black balaclava, and bizarrely she had noticed his bright blue eyes, too blue. Contacts. His voice was disguised too. He was hiding. Stella felt sick. When she watched him stab Biba so mercilessly, watched her assistant, her friend, collapse, blood-soaked, Stella had frozen, not believing what she was seeing. Oh Biba, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Stella wondered if she was dead. She barely remembered him dragging her to his van. Now, with her hands bound behind her back, she lay on the freezing metal floor of a van as he drove it. She had the sense that they were going uphill, and with the cold, she guessed they were driving up a mountain. Maybe Rainier, or Olympic National Park. She had lost track of time, they could have been on the road for hours. Maybe he was even taking her to Canada. Please, she spoke softly. Please tell me what you want. Nothing. Silence. She changed track. I'm very cold, sir. Could you possibly crank up the heat? 
Again, no reply, but she saw him turn the heat up. Thank you. Good, that gave her hope that he had some humanity in him. She kept quiet then, trying to figure out how to deal with this. Should she give him what he wanted? Her love? Her body? Stella was a grown-up. If it took offering him these things to preserve her life, she would do it. Or should she try to exert power by turning on the diva in her? Would that mean he would kill her quicker? What do you want? Tell me. An hour later, the van came to an abrupt halt, and the man got out, coming around to the back of the vehicle. He yanked open the doors and grabbed her, wrapping a thick coat around her and picking her up easily. She had been right, they were in the mountains. Snow swirled around them, making it hard to see, but soon she realized he was taking her to a lodge of some kind. It was warmly lit, and Stella felt a little surge of hope. But once inside, when she saw just what kind of monster he really was, all her hope died, and Stella Reckless began to scream. Chapter 19 Reggie, breathless and shaking, burst into Biba's hospital room, making both her and Cosimo jump. Reggie stared at her. Oh, thank God, thank God. He threw himself at her, and Biba hugged him hard, wincing slightly at the force of his embrace. For a few minutes, she reassured him that she was fine, she was okay. Cosimo left them alone, shooting a smile at his lover before he left the room. Reggie finally sat down on the chair Cosimo had vacated. Gosh, Biba, I'm sorry I'm so late. Mom got sicker and when Cosimo called, the I-5 had traffic backed up. It's okay, I'm fine, Biba said. She indicated a blood bag hanging above her. Just getting some fresh stuff pumped into me. She gave Reggie a half-smile, then it faded. Rich is dead, Reg. He nodded. I know. Gosh, I'm sorry, have they any news about Stella? Nothing. Whoever took her had it planned out perfectly. At least that what's the FBI thinks. Reggie sighed, shaking his head. Agent Harris again? Yup. Geez, couldn't they have sent someone who wasn't a moron? Stella's life is in danger. Biba's eyes filled with tears and Reggie squeezed her hand. I'm sorry, boo, I didn't mean to upset you. I just mean, gosh, I don't know. Cosimo's sending out private detectives to look for them. They have questions. Reggie looked impressed. Such as? How the hell did the abductor get in past the gates? How did he know that Stella was alone in her trailer when the rest of us were out at the lake? Biba sighed, rubbing her face with her fingers, hard enough to leave red marks. Reg, who would do this? Murder Rich? Take Stella. A psychopath, Biebs. That's the only thing I got. He nodded at her body. Does it hurt? It's sore but bearable. Biba looked out of the window. Gunter is absolutely destroyed, Reg. He came to see me yesterday, he's broken. Her voice shook. Reggie shook his head, his eyes filled with sympathy. I'm so sorry, Rich was one of the good ones. He was. They sat in companionable silence for a while. How's your mom doing? Docs think it might be pneumonia now. She's pretty sick. Biba groaned. Gosh. Reg, you need to go back to her. I'm okay here, seriously. If all goes well, I'll be out of here in a couple of days, and I have Cosimo to take care of me. Mary needs you. He looked at her unhappily. Are you sure? Absolutely. Get back to her, Reggie. You can call me whenever you like. He got up and hugged her again. I love you. I love you too, she told him smiling. Hey and listen. Tell your mom red vines are great for pneumonia. Reggie rolled his eyes and chuckled. I will, she won't need much persuasion. Later, Biebs. Glad you're feeling okay. Later, Reggie. Downstairs, Cosimo was talking to some of the nurses at the station. It is customary that we ask the relative to donate blood, one of them was telling him. Of course. I have some right now if you could point me in the right direction. I'll come with you. Cosimo turned around to see his mother, Olivia and Nico walking toward him. Hey. 
Hey you guys, why are you here? You really think we're not going to come support you and Biba? I don't know my blood type though. Cosimo hugged his son and mother. Both your mom and I were O negative, so you'll be too. Ah good, the nurse said, the universal blood donor. We will check it though. We always do before a first time donation. Come with me. As they walked, Nico bombarded Cosimo with questions. Is Biba okay? Have they found Stella? Yes and no, Cosimo said as they made their way to the blood donation room. The FBI are out hunting, but there's no news. Biba is doing well, actually better than hoped. She'll be delighted to see you both. They filled out the preliminary paperwork, and all three of them had their blood types taken. As they waited to give blood, Cosimo tried to relax. It had been such a fraught day and a half that he felt as if he hardly drawn breath. The nurse came in, looking perplexed. We're going to have to do your blood type again, young man, she said. We think we've got a bad reading. Nico shrugged. Sure, no problem. Twenty minutes later, the doctor came to see them. His face serious. Can I just double check some details? Sure. He asked Cosimo about Nico's birth and the circumstances surrounding it. Both Cosimo and Nico exchanged confused looks. Olivia took charge. Doctor, give it to us straight. What are you saying? The doctor looked uncomfortable. Mr. DeLuca, your son's blood type was tested five times by our nurses and each time returned the same result. Blood type AB positive. There's no doubt. Cosimo felt the blood drain from his face. What? Nico got it before his father and turned to them with a grim face. They're saying I'm not your son, Dad. They're saying Mom cheated on you. Chapter 20 A week. That was all it was, but their lives had all changed immeasurably. Biba was discharged from the hospital after five days, and she and Cosimo went to his hotel in the city. The set at Lakewood had been deemed a crime scene, and the movie abandoned for now, so the cast and crew had decamped to the hotels. Each of them had been questioned about the night of Rich's murder and Stella's abduction. The national news media hounded their every step. Cosimo managed to sneak Biba into the hotel through the service elevator. The news had learned that Cosimo and Biba were in a relationship and were fascinated by the story of dashingly handsome cinematic wunderkind and the all-American beauty he'd fallen in love with. Cosimo was still reeling from the revelation of Nico's parentage. Everything he had believed about his marriage crumbled around him. Worse, he was heartbroken, until Nico, Olivia and Biba had all told him the same thing. Nico, in his teenage way, had put it best and bluntly. I don't care whose DNA I've got, you're my father, and screw everyone else. Biba had agreed with him. Screw blood types. You raised him cause Nico is your son. Now, alone with Biba in their hotel suite, Cosimo finally felt able to face what had happened. They lay together on the bed. Biba kissed him. Seems weird to be in bed with you and not able to do it. Are you sure the doctor said six weeks and not six hours? Cosimo chuckled. Unfortunately so. But you need to heal. Gosh, we were lucky it wasn't worse. I can't stop thinking about Stella and Rich. Rich deserved better. What do you think happened? I think like you, he arrived at the wrong time just as the psycho was about to abduct Stella. Or maybe Rich got there just beforehand, and he was stabbed just to get him out of the way. Biba looked sick. I can't stop seeing the blood. Cosimo stroked her face. Try not to think about it. He pressed his lips to hers, feeling her respond. Biba, when this is all over, I'd like to take you away to Italy to just get some alone time. I feel in my bones that we'll get Stella back alive. How can you be so sure? He gave a humorless laugh. I don't know. There was a knock at the door, and Cosimo got up. It was their private security guard. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir, but there are two military personnel here to see you. Cosimo was confused as Biba sat up. I don't know. Let them in, 
Biba said in a strange voice, standing and coming to his side. Please. Let them in. Cosimo looked in confusion at her, but Biba's expression was hard as stone. As the two visitors stepped into the suite, a man and a woman, Cosimo suddenly understood. Biba stiffened beside him. Well, she said with a voice like ice, Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. To what do we owe the pleasure? Cosimo walked into the bar, and Sifrido and Franco waved him over. How's Biba? At the moment, hard to say. Her parents showed up at last. Sifrido whistled, but Franco nodded. Good. It's about time. Cosimo felt a hundred years old. Tell me some good news. Sifrido had taken the lead in keeping in touch with the police investigation, while Lars and Channing dealt with the studio and the FBI. Well, if no news is good news, Sifrido said, and Cosimo's shoulders slumped. Damn. I just feel so useless. Can't we make a public appeal, something? We could, but who knows if it would do any good. Cosimo sighed. It's worth a shot. I'll talk to Lars and Chan. Maybe we can persuade Agent Dufus to help us. Maybe. I have to do something, how's Gunter doing? Franco sighed. He quit, that's all we know for sure. He's going back to Germany as soon as he's allowed. Poor kid. Rich was his other half in so many ways. Sometimes we don't recognize that a deep friendship is just as profound as a romantic or familial one. Upstairs in their suite, Biba was wondering who these people were to her now, these people standing in front of her. Looks wise, there was a smattering of gray hair, but otherwise they looked no different than the last time she had seen them. So you've come. This was after all three of them had been silent for too long. Her father cleared his throat. You were hurt. Stabbed. Yes. I was in the hospital for five days. It was on the news, which is how I assume you found out about it. Bebo wasn't in the mood to play nice. You could have called us. Her mother spoke finally, and Biba detected a little quaver to her voice. Her mother, the major, was nervous of her. Biba didn't care. I could have, but then again I was busy recovering from being stabbed. Stabbed. Did you not understand that part? She gave a disgusted noise. Why are you here? Her father glanced at her mother, then cleared his throat. We wanted to say, about Derek. We're sorry. We're sorry we didn't listen to you. Biba stared at her father. Derek was sent to jail five years ago. You've had five years to apologize and yet it's been crickets. Why now? Because? Because I was stabbed? So now that I've almost been murdered, now I'm worthy of being apologized to. Shove your apology. She turned away from them, not wanting them to see her tears, but her mother caught her arm. Biba, please. Listen to us. Biba sighed. You know what? Fine. I accept your apology. You're forgiven. But you'll have to excuse me. My friend was just murdered, and my boss and friend is missing, abducted by a psychopath who stuck his knife in my belly. Twice. I don't have time for reunions when my real family is suffering. Please just go. She turned away again and went back into the bedroom, shutting the door behind her, but staying close to it to hear what they had decided to do. She heard low voices and the sweet door being opened and shut. She peeked out and saw with relief that they had gone. She went to find the security guard and asked him where Cosimo had gone. I believe he is in the bar, Miss May. I'll escort you down. Stella tried to block the stench of death out of her nose with the blanket he had given her. At last he had allowed her to find something to wear. The woman who had lived here, the woman who stared back at Stella with sightless dead eyes as she huddled in the tiny locked bedroom, had been roughly Stella's size. When he dragged Stella to the bedroom, her prison it seemed, he'd pointed out the closet without saying anything. Stella was pathetically grateful for the clothes found, sweaters, jeans, fleeces, and socks. She'd pulled on everything she could find, layering clothes over clothes. The room itself was heated, the bed comfortable, and Stella had to admit, if she wasn't terrified for her life, she could pretend she was on a break. 
but she was terrified, barely sleeping in case he forced himself on her. But he'd left her alone for long periods. Until now. This morning, he unlocked her door and made her come out into the living room. She tried not to look at the dead woman slumped in the easy chair, her blood-soaked shirt, the gaping slice in her neck almost to the bone. The brutality of it made her shiver, reminded her, as if she needed reminding, of the way he had attacked Biba, the utter lack of mercy. Who was she? Stella asked without thinking, but he ignored her. Stella swallowed and stepped towards the woman. Can I close her eyes at least? Cover her up. Leave her alone. The scarf tied over his face muffled his voice, but he wasn't using the voice manipulator. Stella decided to try to get him to talk. If he was someone she knew. Because she figured out, he had to be. To get through the security Cosimo had put in place at Lakewood, to be able to know exactly where her trailer was, and to get in. Can we talk? Stella decided to turn on the reckless charm, what harm could it do? She averted her eyes from the evidence of the harm it could do, the dead woman, and sat down in another chair. What is it we are doing here? Your letter said we would be together, and we are, so what now? She deliberately didn't acknowledge the threats in his last letter. Her abductor sat down opposite her, staring at her with those unnaturally blue eyes, but saying nothing. Stella tried again. Look, I haven't seen your face. You could stop all this now and just let me go. Or tell me what you want from me, and we can try to make it work. She hid her feeling of nausea at the thought of being intimate with this monster. He lifted the voice modifier to his mouth. You're lying. You don't want me. Please don't insult my intelligence. Stella sighed. Then why am I here? To die. Stella kept her composure. But why? What have I ever done to you? She silently cursed as her voice broke. Why did you have to kill Biba? What do you care about her? She was my friend. He gave a sarcastic laugh. The way you treated her was not as a friend. So he was known to them. Do you care about Biba? Do you care that you murdered a sweet girl? I enjoyed it. Oh dear, he got up and switched on the television. You need to see this. Stella was startled to see Cosimo in front of a bank of journalists, with the FBI agent alongside him and Lars. He looked exhausted and drawn. Stella saw the recorded earlier logo in the corner of the screen. She tried to concentrate on what Cosimo was saying. Please, whoever you are, you've already killed one person. This has to end now. Bring Stella back to us unharmed, and we'll do everything we can to get you the help you need. He's lying, her captor said. Stella ignored him. Gosh. Cosimo looked heartbroken and Stella felt guilty, he had obviously loved Biba very much. She got angry. Why are you showing me this? What did you hope to achieve? He said nothing and frustrated, Stella stood. Let me go. Now. This is madness. She only had time to blink once before he was on her. Chapter 21 Biba watched as Cosimo spoke to the press. Since her parents had visited, she had been on edge, close to breaking. Her body ached, and she felt a million years old. Being around other people was irritating to her, except for Cosimo. She wanted all of this to be over so that Stella was safe and Biba didn't have to carry this guilt around with her. If only she and Stella hadn't bickered, Stella might have been at the fireworks that night, and Rich might be alive. Cosimo was kept busy with the journalists, and Biba slipped away into the lounge of the hotel. She called Reggie, wanting to hear her old friend's voice. Hey Boo. Hey Reggie, how are you? How's Mary? I'm good, but mom's in a sugar coma. Biba laughed, her body relaxing. Seriously, how's the pneumonia? Reggie sighed. It's not good, but you know mom, she's a fighter. Any news on Stella? None. I saw the press conference, not sure it'll do any good. No, neither are we, but we all feel so helpless, Reg. We just have no idea what the hell to do. 
If he asked for a ransom, that would be something, but it's like they've disappeared into thin air. She could be dead already. Her voice quivered, and she began to cry softly. Oh, baby. Reggie's voice was soft. Don't cry. I never knew I loved her until now, Biba sobbed. She's a pain, but I love her like she's my sister. I can't bear to think of her scared and alone. Who knows what the jerk is doing to her? Stella's not as tough as she makes out. There was a long silence on the end of the phone. Darling, I know you. You're blaming yourself, and that isn't fair. How were you to know? I could have fought harder. He stabbed you, Biba, no one could have fought harder. Biba couldn't stop her tears. Reg? Look, do you want to come here? For a few days? To get away from everything? Suddenly, that's all she wanted to do. I'll talk to Cuz. I can come get you whenever. While Biba didn't want to be away from Cosimo, she wanted to get away from Tacoma, and Cosimo agreed with her. I want you out of danger, baby. I trust Reggie to keep you safe while we work all of this out. They were alone in their hotel suite, late in the evening after a day of press and being around other people. They were both glad of the alone time. Cosimo stroked her face. You look as if you're in pain. A little. The doctor said it would be painful as I healed. I just wish I want to be close to you, Cosimo, especially now, and I feel as if my body is stopping that. In the morning, they were awoken by an excited Lars, telling them the FBI had a lead. Chapter 22 They all sat in the hotel's conference room, listening to the FBI agent's radio communication on a sound system they had set up for them to hear the operation. Biba sat with Cosimo, her hand clutching his, her heart beating wildly in her chest. To know that soon, maybe they'd get Stella back was making her feel sick with hope. Please, please let her be okay, Biba swore to all her gods that if they brought Stella back, she'd never argue with her again. Both of them would be changed by this, but she was determined that they would be changed for the better, both of them. Luke Harris nodded to them as he came into the room. Any minute now, you'll hear the lead getting his men into position. Where are they? Rainier, a cabin near the Nisqually entrance to the park. Biba studied the agent. If he brought Stella back safely, she would take back every negative thought she'd ever had about him. How did you find them? It's important to say that we haven't found them, we're just working on a tip. I don't want to give false hope, but this is the best lead we've had. From a tip? An anonymous call from someone staying on the mountain. He told us he'd seen something suspicious, a woman fighting with a man, outside one of the cabins the night Ms. Reckless was taken and it took him this long to call. Cosimo's voice held all the skepticism that Biba felt. Luke Harris shrugged, and Biba tried not to snap at him. He really was the worst. So the caller might have lied? The caller could have been the real killer, throwing you off the scent? Biba's voice was cold, but again Harris shrugged off her question. We don't think that's the case, he said, a smug, patronizing smile on his face. Biba wanted to punch him. Instead, she leaned over to Cosimo and whispered in his ear. This isn't going to be what he thinks. I don't believe this is genuine. Cosimo studied her. I hope you're wrong, but I agree. Something is hinky. As they waited to hear what happened, there was a knock at the door, and Reggie stuck his head in. Can I join? Of course. He gave Bieber a hug, clapped Cosimo on the back. How goes it? Channing told me downstairs they've got a lead. Biba shot him a look. Yeah. Agent Harris is sure. Reggie got her drift right away. Ah. Ten minutes later, Biba's worst fears were confirmed. The tip turned out to be a false alarm. The SWAT team burst in on a very shocked elderly couple who were doing a puzzle. Agent Harris looked crestfallen. Well, obviously, Will. But Biba had had enough. She got up and stalked out of the conference room, followed by Cosimo and Reggie. Biba was steaming angry as she slammed into her suite. That jerk, she spat out, he's not taking this seriously. 
This is Stella's life we're talking about. Cosimo put his arms around her. I know, Snooks. He looked at Reggie. Look, Reg, I know you're here to take Biba to your mom's, but I want you to take protection with you. No problem, Reggie said, his eyes serious. Anything to make sure Biba's safe. Biba looked up at Cosimo. I don't know if I want to go. No disrespect, Reg, but I need to stay with Cosimo. No, Cosimo said firmly. You need to be away from all of this, so you can recover. I want to stick around, but I'll follow you up in a couple of days, if that's okay, Reg. Perfect. Mom's cabin has plenty of room, so we'll have quite the party. Cosimo smiled. Thanks. So baby, we won't be apart for long. Bebo wasn't happy, but nodded. Okay. Cosimo went to seek out Steve, the head of his security, and asked him to accompany Biba and Reg. Just don't let anything happen to them, he asked, and Steve nodded. I won't. And call me every hour to give me an update, okay? Done and done, boss. Before Biba left with Reggie, she and Cosimo took some private time. Pressing her lips to his, Biba kissed him, murmuring, I love you so much, Cosimo de Luca. Marry me, Biba May. Cosimo stroked her hair back from her face. I know it's crazy. I know we have so much to learn about each other, but I don't want to wait any longer. When all this is over, when Stella is safely back with us, marry me. Yes, Biba said without hesitation. Yes, my darling Cosimo, I will marry you. You're right. Let's not wait any longer. Cosimo smiled, and it lit up his entire face. I can't wait to be your husband. Nor I your wife. She hesitated a little. Do you think Nico would mind? Let's call him and ask. Facetiming with him, they could tell Nico was overjoyed. Nice work, Pa, he said, making Biba laugh. I don't have to call you mom, do I? Hell no, Biba made a face. How about we just be besties? I like that. So, when's the big day? Unclear yet. When all this nightmare is cleared up, Nick. Cosimo smiled at his son. I'd like to get married in Venice, Biba said suddenly, in the summer, all four of us together. Or five if we include Reggie, I'll need a bride's man. They all laughed, and Cosimo looked touched. Then Venice it is. He kissed Biba and Nico protested. Gosh, get a room. As Reggie brought his car around and chatted with Steve, Cosimo kissed Biba goodbye. I'll be happier knowing you're out of the line of fire. I love you. On the journey to Reggie's mom's cabin in the Olympic Mountains, they chatted about nothing in particular, aware of Steve's presence in the car behind them. I just wish this was all over, Biba said. I keep thinking how scared Stella must be. Don't think about it, Reggie said. I'll bet your imaginings are worse than the reality. Biba frowned. Dude, did you read the crap he sent her? Guy's a nut job. I know that, but what I'm saying is, maybe once he actually got her, he chickened out. Chickened out? Reg, this man stabbed Rich seven times. He stabbed me twice. I doubt chickening out is in his wheelhouse. She was mad now, staggered by her best friend's lack of sensitivity. I don't want to argue, Bugs. They drove on in an uncomfortable silence for a while, Biba wondering if she had made the right decision. Now, driving away from Cosimo, she felt more vulnerable, not less. As they entered the Olympics, Reg suddenly looked at his gauges. Shit. Her attention was caught. What is it? She noticed the car slowing. Outside, the snow was coming down heavily as Reg put the blinkers on and moved to the side of the road. Cars misbehaving. Hang on. He stopped the vehicle and got out, walking to the front and popping the hood. Biba looked around and saw Steve pull up behind them. He got out of the car and walked around their car. He knocked on her window, mouthing, You okay? Biba nodded and gave him the thumbs up, and Steve continued around to talk to Reggie. Biba waited while the two men took a look at the car, jumping slightly when the hood was slammed back down. Biba watched them talk, but then as Steve turned away, everything changed. In horror, Biba watched as Reggie pulled a handgun from his jacket and leveled it at the back of Steve's head. No. 
Biba screamed, but it was too late. Reggie shot Steve in the head, and the bodyguard dropped like a stone. Biba couldn't believe what she was seeing. She clawed at the door of the car and staggered out, staring at her best friend. Reggie smiled at her. Don't run, Biba. I don't want to kill you here. Her legs wouldn't move even though every cell in her body told her to run. Reggie was at her side in a flash, taking her upper arm and dragging her back to the car. He pressed the gun to her wounded belly hard, and she gasped at the pain. Now in the glove compartment you'll find some handcuffs. I want you to cuff your left hand and put it around the back of your seat. Try anything and I'll empty this whole clip into you. Was this really happening? Her best friend? Her Reggie? Had he gone crazy? Biba did as she was told, and Reggie cuffed her right hand to her left. She was trapped. Reggie got back in the driver's seat. Now let's go. I know someone is looking forward to seeing you. Chapter 23 Cosimo couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. He sought out Lars, who was working at one of the tables in the lounge. Lars smiled at him as he sat down. Biba get away okay? Cosimo nodded. Fine, but now I'm thinking I shouldn't have let her out of my sight. It's the yips, Lars said with a shrug. We've all got them since Stella. She's with Reggie and Steve cause they'll die before they let anything happen to her. Cosimo sighed. You're right. Any news? Not on Stella, but Rich's family is suing the studio. Well, I don't blame them. Tell them I'll support them in their bid. They're suing you too, Lars said with a half laugh, and Cosimo snorted. I don't blame them for that either. Tell their lawyer I'll settle. Seventeen million. Do it. Lars laughed again. Oh, to be a billionaire. Cosimo smiled, but his eyes were serious. I'm responsible, Lars. When I'm the director on a film set and something like this happens, I'm responsible. I should have upped the security, asked for a different FBI agent, so much more. Dude, you had an army, relatively speaking, of course. Cosimo rubbed his face, then pulled his cell phone out of his pocket. Steve's supposed to be checking in every hour. How long ago did they leave? Forty minutes. Lars took the phone from Cosimo. You'll drive yourself crazy like that. Come on, man, relax a little. There's nothing else to do. Maybe I should follow them up to the cabin. Geez, cuz, Sifrido came up behind them rolling his eyes. Always the control freak. Relax, brother. He flopped down into an easy chair and exchanged a look with Lars that Cosimo didn't understand. Lars picked up his phone. Gotta make a call. Be right back. Cosimo waited until Lars had left and then looked at Sifrido. What is it? Sifrido hesitated. I'm not sure this is the right time to bring this up. Then again, I don't think there is a good time to have this conversation. Just spill it, Frido. Sifrido squared his shoulders and nodded. It's about Grace, Dot and me. And one night, sixteen years ago. He didn't need to say any more, but Cosimo would bet all of his money he wasn't expecting the reaction Cosimo gave him. Oh, thank God. Sifrido's eyebrows shot up. What? Cosimo started to laugh. As weird as this sounds, I'm glad. I'm glad it's you, Frido. I had always suspected you and Grace were attracted to each other. I just didn't know you'd acted on it. But gosh, I'm relieved. Knowing Nico, you know. Sifrido was incredulous. You're okay with raising another man's son? Cosimo smiled. I did no such thing. I raised my son. Nico is my child regardless of whose DNA he shares. If these past few weeks has taught me anything, it's that family doesn't mean sharing blood. It's more profound than that. You are my family, Frido, so the fact you and Grace, I don't care. Nico is my son, and I love him more than anything. Apart from Biba? On par with Biba. I'm not saying finding out he wasn't my biological son wasn't a shock, but by God, Frito, I could not be prouder of Nico, and the man he's becoming. 
Sifrito ran his hand through his hair, still not believing what was happening. I'm sorry about Grace. It was a moment of weakness, and we both felt awful afterward. I don't think she knew about Nico. I truly believe she thought Nico was yours. Cosimo got up and hugged his friend. Do you want to tell Nico? I don't know. Would he rather not know? Cosimo pondered the question. I'll ask him. He called Nico a little while later and told him that he found out who his father was. Yeah, you, said Nico, but I suppose I should know whose DNA I got. Cosimo was relieved when Nico took the news well. Better than expected, Nico said, at least Frito's a friend. That's what I said. Although I will have to pound on him just a little bit for messing with my mom. Cosimo chuckled, knowing Nico was joking. I guess that's your prerogative. How's Biba? Immediately, the weight in Cosimo's chest returned. On her way to Reggie's mom's cabin. He checked his watch. And her protection is late calling in. Nick, I have to go. Sure, Dad. Give Biebs my love. I will. Cosimo ended the call and dialed Steve's cell phone. Even if he were driving, Steve should have hands free, but the phone rang and rang. After ten rings, it went to voicemail. It's okay, don't panic, everything is okay. He sucked in a deep breath, telling himself to relax. After three hours, however, he knew. Something was terribly wrong. He went to find Lars and Channing. Guys, he said in a grim voice. I'm calling the police. Both of you, get on the phones and find out everything you can about Reggie Quinn. I think our killer was hiding in plain sight all this time. Chapter 24 Reggie shoved Biba, still cuffed, into the cabin, and she whimpered when she saw Mary Quinn's body propped up in the chair. Gosh, what did you do? Her whisper was full of grief. Mary? There was no doubt what had happened to her, seeing the gaping hole in her neck. Reggie smiled. Mom is at peace now. She was really sick, Biba. Her eyes narrowed. Like her son. He laughed. Being in love isn't a sickness, Biba, you should know that. My love for Stella is real, a dream, and now you are going to help that dream come true. He undid her cuffs, but kept a tight hold on her as he steered her towards the back of the cabin. Unlocking a door, he pushed her inside. Biba saw Stella at the same time her boss saw her. Stella gave a cry, and the two women threw themselves at each other, embracing hard. I thought you were dead. I thought you were dead, was all Stella could say through hysterical sobs. Biba held her so hard she could feel her arms going numb. It's okay, it's okay now, I'm here. How sweet. Stella rounded on Reggie. You told me you killed her. Reggie shrugged. Semantics. It'll be true soon. Biba couldn't believe what was happening. Reggie? Her person? Her best friend? You stabbed me. He smiled. I did. I hadn't planned on hurting anybody, but first Rich, then you got in my way. He told me he enjoyed stabbing you. Stella was holding Biba's hand. Didn't you, you sick jerk? Reggie laughed. I did, I admit it. And it was true, sinking my knife into your soft belly, Biba, I got hard. Which is why I'm going to do it again, only this time, there won't be a happy ending for you. Don't you touch her. Stella dragged Biba behind her. Biba was just numb. Why do you think I brought her here, Stella? She's our insurance. We'll make it to the Canadian border with her, then I'll stab her to death and leave her body somewhere to throw the feds off the scent. We'll be in the wind before they know it. Plus, while she's with us, Cosimo will do anything I tell him to. Biba didn't even feel afraid. Reggie was going to kill her. He was going to use her murder to help him escape with Stella and to torment Cosimo. Bastard. She had no intention of going quietly. You'll have to kill me first, Stella growled at him, but Biba shook her head. He won't do it. He hasn't got the guts. She faced down her old friend, the man she had thought for such a long time was the only person she could trust. Reggie studied her. 
You know, you've changed since you started sleeping with DeLuca. I have to admit, I was surprised. F you. Biba said, ignoring Stella's whimper of fear. You have no idea what real love is. It's not this. Keeping someone prisoner, threatening them, aggression. So, who's the dysfunctional one out of the two of us, Reg? I'm going to enjoy killing you, Biba. You're not going to get the chance, jerk. Now, you want to go right now, because I'm in the mood to fight you into next Tuesday. Reggie laughed mirthlessly and then grabbed her, twisting his fingers in her hair as he held the knife to her throat. Biba stamped on his instep, ignoring the knife. Reggie roared with pain and released her, but he still managed to lash out with his knife, slicing through her back. Biba gasped, Stella screamed, and Reggie slammed his elbow into Biba's head, and everything went dark. For once, Agent Luke Harris wasn't being cocky. We have men on the way to the cabin now, but there's a pretty bad storm going on up there. We can't fly in. No. No, you get there however you can as fast as you can, Cosimo was yelling, his terror making him almost wild. He's going to kill both of them. Sifrido, Lars, Channing, and Franco were equally worried. Look, if you won't send people out, we'll go, Sifrido said. Harris held up his hands. No, you're not listening. We are sending people out, lots of them, but I cannot control the weather. We send choppers up there, they will crash. More people will die. I swear to you all, we have an army headed up to the Olympics. Quinn won't get far. Cosimo ran his hands through his dark curls and closed his eyes. I gave her to him. How the hell would you know any different? Reggie fooled us all. Franco nodded. And look, we still don't know for sure that anything is wrong. It could be the storms taken out Steve's cell service. For an hour or so, Cosimo kept that in his mind to stop himself from going crazy. But his resolve was shattered when a pale, stricken-looking Harris caught up with them. We found Steve Kimmel's body. He was shot in the head and Reggie's car is gone. Cosimo put his head in his hands, and when Harris left them to go get an update, he looked up into Sifrido's concerned face. I need to get there, Frido. I need to save her, them. Sifrido hesitated for one second. My car is outside. Let's go. Chapter 25 Biba woke, feeling woozy and nauseous. Stella was cradling her head in her lap. Biba. Her voice was a whisper. Biba realized they were in a vehicle, moving. Where are we? Going towards Canada, I think. I'm not sure. No, don't move too much. That cut on your back is bleeding like crazy, I can't get it to stop. Shit. That meant the slash of the knife had gone too deep, probably nicked a kidney. She was bleeding to death, slowly. Biba swallowed a throat full of vomit. Stella, get closer. Stella bent her head to Biba's, and Biba felt Stella's tears on her cheek. Don't cry, Stell. I'm going to get you out of here. Stella gave a strange laugh. Biebs, you can't even walk. I can just. I'm going to go for Reggie and get him to steer off the road. I want you to hang on in here as hard as you can. The moment we come to a stop, you get out and you run. Don't stop, just get as far as you can, flag down a car. You're delirious, baby. You can't make it. We won't make it. It's our only chance. He has a gun, he'll shoot you. Biba laughed softly. I'm dying anyway. The least I can do is go out in a blaze of glory. Stella buried her face in Biba's shoulder and sobbed. I'm so sorry for the way I've treated you, Biba. The truth is, you're the only person in this world who I trust and one of the few I truly love. You've always had my back. Always but I can't leave you here to die for me. Not going to happen. We do this together or not at all. Girl power. Biba's voice was weakening. You bet. And. Her words were cut off as the van lurched to a stop and Reggie got out. They heard him unlock the back doors. They'd run out of time. Pretend I'm dead, Biba whispered urgently. Scream make a fuss. It'll give me time. Stella nodded and let out an ear-piercing scream. 
Biba tried not to flinch as her eardrums protested. A rush of freezing cold air. She's dead, you bastard. Biba's dead. She bled to death while you, geez, what the hell is wrong with you? There was a silence. Biba could only hear Stella's heavy breathing. Then. She's dead? Faint hope ignited inside Biba. Reggie sounded shocked, even a little heartbroken. Well damn, he catches up, Stella said sarcastically, cradling Biba's head in her arms. She was your best friend, Reggie, and you killed her. How does that make you feel, huh? Then Reggie chuckled, and Biba's hope dissolved. Well, I guess it saves me killing her later. Leave her body. They're following us, they'll find her. Wish I could stay to see DeLuca's face. No. Biba's whisper was urgent. Don't let him take you. I'm not going anywhere without her. Biba felt Stella being dragged away from her. No, no. As she heard Reggie's voice growing distant, she hauled herself up, her clothes sticky with blood. She limped to the van's driver's seat, hunting for anything she could use as a weapon. Underneath the passenger's seat, she found a tire iron. Better than nothing. Ignoring the searing pain in her back, Biba staggered out into the storm to follow Reggie and Stella. Cosimo and Sifrido drove in silence, both on edge as the storm grew worse around them. Two hours into the park, and they saw the van on the side of the road. Where the hell are the FBI if we can find this? It might not be anything, Sifrido cautioned as they got out of the car, but when they inspected the van, Cosimo saw the back of it awash with blood and on the floor a small charm bracelet. He reached in and picked up the delicate gold chain with the single diamond hanging from it. It's them, he said in a dull voice. I gave this to Biba for her birthday. Sifrido patted his shoulder. I think they went this way. Cosimo didn't move. Frido, look at all this blood. Someone bled out here. Not necessarily, cause there's a blood trail here. Come on. They found Biba, slumped over in the snow, barely conscious. Cosimo scooped her into his arms and held her close while Sifrido examined her wounds. Geez, it's deep. We need to get her back to civilization. No, Biba moaned, we're so close. They're just ahead of me. Please save her. For me, cuz save her. Cosimo hesitated and Biba touched his face. This will all have been for nothing if we don't. She wriggled out of his arms and stood as best she could. I'm okay, I think. She saw the skepticism in her face and tried to smile. Okay, I'm not, but he isn't going to win. Then hold on to me and do not let go, Cosimo said, sliding his arm around her waist. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it together. They set off slowly along the tracks Reggie and Stella had left. He has a gun. Just thought I'd mention it. The blood loss was making her lightheaded and squirrely. Cosimo almost smiled. Always helpful to know. Ten minutes later, Sifrido stopped them, putting his finger to his lips and pointing downhill. They saw flashes of color amidst the snowy trees and heard a woman's voice carrying back to them. Stella's giving him hell, Biba whispered, and Cosimo nodded. If he thinks that's hell, he's about to find out what hell is really like. He lowered her to the ground, propped up against a tree. Baby, we need to take him by surprise, and as much as I love you, we can't do that holding you up. Biba nodded. I get it. I'm going to be back before you know it. He pressed his lips to his. My little warrior. I love you. Love you too, be careful. Biba smiled at him, then her eyes lit up. I have a weapon. She pulled the tire iron from her pocket. Cosimo stroked her face. You hang on to that, just in case. We brought our own. He showed her the guns he and Sifrido had brought with them. Biba nodded. Kill him. He murdered Rich and his own mother. Cosimo nodded, his eyes dangerous. Don't worry, Reggie Quinn is going down. Chapter 26 Stella struggled with Reggie, no longer concerned about herself. She was just determined that if she was killed, she was taking this jerk with her. You piece of shit, you left her to die. I thought you told me she was dead. Reggie was smirking. 
His fingers were tangled in Stella's blonde hair, dragging her down the hill. She kicked out and caught him on the knee. Reggie buckled and dragged her down with him as he fell. You damn skink. He hit her hard, making her ears ring, but then she heard it. A gunshot. Hope. She looked up and saw two very angry Italian men, bearing down on them. Cosimo leveled his gun at Reggie. Time's up, Quinn. Screw you, DeLuca. Reggie attempted to grab Stella to hold his own gun to her head, but Stella had really had enough. With the heel of her hand, she slammed it into his nose. With a screech, Reggie dropped the gun, his nose pouring with blood. Stella kicked him away from her and scrambled in the snow to get away. Cosimo scooped her up as Sifrido aimed his gun at Reggie's face. Due process? He asked Cosimo and Stella. Rich didn't get due process. Or this scumbag's mother. Stella spat. Sifrido smiled grimly. Reggie started to laugh. Nor your precious Biba. I enjoyed slicing her up, DeLuca. I really, really enjoyed it. Sifrido shot him in the face and Reggie dropped. Calmly, Sifrido wrapped Reggie's fingers around his own gun and fired it into the trees. Cuz, go walk around over there, make it look like he was firing at you. Cosimo did as he asked, and then they left Reggie's body for the FBI to find. The three of them hurried back to Biba, who smiled at all of them. I love you all, she said, sounding drunk. Is he dead? As a dodo. Cosimo lifted her into his arms. Stella smoothed Biba's hair away from her face. Love you, Biebs. She ignored Cosimo and Sifrido's astonished glances, but Biba saw them and grinned. You boys never see some lady love. Love you too, Stell. Now, can I ask a question? Anything, baby. Cosimo kissed her forehead. Biba smiled. Anyone mind if I pass out now? Chapter 27 Four months later. Stella touched Franco's face. Thornton, after everything we've been through, the horror, the torment, surely now you know that I have loved you from the very beginning. Thornton nodded. My darling Lucy, I just wish it hadn't taken your death to convince me. I wish I could have saved you, my love, my precious love. We will be together soon, my darling. I am waiting for you, I am waiting. And cut. That's a wrap, folks. Congrats and thank you all. Cosimo led the applause as the cast and crew finally relaxed. They had been back on set for a month finishing up the movie, and everyone had returned, all determined to finish what they started. The film would be dedicated to Rich Furlow. To Cosimo, that was a no-brainer, but he also wanted to honor Biba too. It had been Stella's idea to start up a foundation to provide opportunities within the movie industry for young people. The Biba May Foundation for the Arts, Stella had declared, as they had sat in Biba's hospital room, talking and recovering from the terrible events of the past few months. Biba had objected at the name. I really don't think it should be named after me. Who am I? Cosimo had opened his mouth, but Stella had beaten him to it. You're the heroine who saved me. You put yourself in danger multiple times to save my life, and yes, Cousin Frito had a huge part to play too, but Biebs, do you know the inspiration you are to young women everywhere? I agree. The Biba May Foundation for the Arts, and that's final. And I'll personally put 10 million in to start. Cosimo nodded, pleased. I'll match it. Biba had watched as Cosimo and Stella had gotten more and more excited over their plans and wondered about how her life had turned out. Her boss was now her best friend, and her employer was her lover. And she loved these two people more than anyone. She had spent months recovering from her physical wounds. To her relief, her kidney hadn't been badly damaged by Reggie's knife, but the psychological horror of Reggie's betrayal, of his years of lies and manipulation, had left her depressed and at times inconsolable. With the exception of Cosimo and Stella, Biba had lost the person she trusted most, and even though she was glad he was gone, she missed having that comfort. She hated feeling like that and had slumped into a depression that even Cosimo had trouble rousing her from. Now, though, she was making it out onto the other side. 
Watching her lover finally finish the film they had all come to Lakewood to make, seeing the relief on his handsome face, was exhilarating. Cosimo came over to her and took her in his arms. We did it, Snooks. His eyes were shining and Biba smiled. We did. Congratulations, baby. Cosimo pressed his lips against hers. I love you, Miss May. Biba wrapped her arms around his neck, not caring about the others who were chuckling and watching. I love you too, Mr. DeLuca. Stella came up to them. Listen, you two, we're having a rap party this evening, and we have a little surprise waiting for you. Cosimo grinned, and Biba's eyebrows shot up. You do. Stella hugged her. A good surprise, I promise. Until then, there's a suite up there that needs to be used. Pimp. You know it. Stella grinned at them both, then went back to talking to Franco, Sifrido, and the crew. The change in her attitude since the abduction was still astonishing to everyone. Stella was laid back, inclusive, friendly, and warm. The weird thing was, Biba said now as she and Cosimo made their way back to the manor, is that I believe that was always the real Stella anyway. That the diva thing was a way of protecting herself. I think you may be right, Cosimo said and grinned down at her. But then you always saw the best in everyone. Biba's smile faded a little, and Cosimo stopped her with a hand on her shoulder. Biba, he fooled us all. Reggie Quinn had all the appearance of goodness. Don't blame yourself for him. In a couple of days, they would be flying to Italy to visit his hometown of Venice and plan their wedding. Biba couldn't wait to go, to get away from the States for a few weeks. Stella had insisted Biba take a few months off. Full pay, of course, and there'll be a bonus as well. Just hang with cuz, relax, chill, plan the wedding. When you're ready to come back, we should talk about you being my manager, not my assistant. You're too good for that, and I've known it for years. And she was happy except, something was missing. Something was unresolved, and now as they relaxed together, wrapping their arms around each other, she talked to Cosimo about how she was feeling. What do you think it is? Cosimo asked her, stroking her cheek. Biba shook his head. I honestly don't know, baby. I'm sure the feeling will fade. But even as they made their way back to their friends that evening, Biba felt it. Something was unfinished. Yes, that was it. She needed closure on what? What was it? Soon, though, her attention was taken by the lakeside gathering as they lit Chinese lanterns and set them onto the water. Oh, this is gorgeous, Biba said, and Cosimo smiled. I'm glad you think so, Biba May. Come with me. He led her out onto the tiny jetty where they had almost made love for the first time. Biba chuckled. Dude, there's like a hundred people watching us, so if you're hoping for a do-over. Cosimo laughed, his green eyes dancing. No, this isn't that, for now. But Biba, Stella helped me organize this little soiree, because there's a very important question I need to ask you. Warmth flooded her system. Emotion rushing up her body as Cosimo knelt in front of her. Biba May, my darling love, you have changed my life. You are my heroine, my savior, my very best friend. Would you do me the great honor of becoming my wife? Biba, tears in her eyes, grinned. I will. Cosimo burst out laughing. And there was me being all formal. So it's a yes? Biba threw her arms around his neck. Yes, yes, yes. Cosimo picked her up and swung her around, and Biba heard their friends cheering, obviously guessing her answer. Cosimo put her down finally, tears glistening on his long lashes. I love you so much, Biba May. You are the love of my life. Biba was shocked into silence for a few seconds. I am. Cosimo nodded. That's not to say I didn't love Grace with all my heart, I did. But Biba, I didn't think my heart could take another risk, and yet you made it impossible not to. I love you. Biba was crying now, and she buried her face in his chest. I love you too, Cosimo de Luca. He kissed her softly. Come on, baby. Let's go see our friends and celebrate with them. At the airport, Nico and Olivia joined them. I'm definitely gonna call you the evil stepmom, Nico grinned at Biba, who punched his arm laughing. 
and you're the evil spawn stepson. That's my job. Cosimo and Biba both rolled their eyes. Flight's delayed for an hour, so we might as well grab something to eat. In the restaurant, Nico fell on his burger. So, Pa, why aren't we taking the private jet? Cosimo grinned at Biba. Because of the environment, Nico. Glad to hear it. Nico exchanged a look with his grandmother. By the way, I have news. Go for it. Nico grinned. I have early acceptance at Oregon State. Cosimo looked taken aback, then delighted. Damn Nico, wow. Gosh, I don't know what to say. Congratulations, son. Thanks, Dad, and I know you wanted me to consider Stanford, and I swear to you I did. Me and Jima went to the campus a week or so ago, and it's beautiful, but I need my pine forests and rain. Word. Biba tapped her soda glass to his, and he winked at her. Thanks, Biebs. So, Dad? Cosimo got up and hugged Nico. I could not be prouder. You killed it with that 4.0. Oh, I know, Nico was all swagger as he sat back down. You didn't want to take a gap year? Nico shook his head. Nah, I want to get on with it, you know? I'll do the years of under and postgrad. I cannot wait to get to do the actual work. And I've broadened my scope too. Ever since we went to Rainier, I can't stop thinking about specializing in volcanology, both on land and under the sea. Cosimo was shaking his head, smiling. What happened to my sulky teen? They chatted for a little while more, and then decided to walk to the departure gate. Biba held Cosimo's hand as Nico and Olivia walked in front of them. She stopped suddenly and looked at Cosimo with nervous eyes. Baby! I need to make a call. Cosimo looked concerned. Everything okay? Oh yes, she said and gave him a smile. I just figured out the unfinished business. She could tell from the way his eyes shone at her that he knew what she was talking about. You want some privacy? She shook her hand. No, I need you to hold my hand. For the rest of our lives, he said softly, you can count on that. Nico and Olivia looked back at them, somehow knowing this was a moment that wasn't to be shared. They moved away to a discreet distance as Biba took out her phone. She scrolled to the number she wanted, then hesitated, her finger hovering over the screen. No matter what, Cosimo said softly, you are loved beyond words. Tears in her eyes, Biba kissed him, then pressed the call button. When the call was accepted, she drew in a long shaky breath. Mom, she said finally, it's me. It's Biba. The End Thank you for listening to this audiobook. Audio Copyright 2023 BFA Publishing Please like and subscribe to support this channel. It helps more than you know.